for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. Uh, yeah, how you doing? How you doing? Today's Tuesday, February 15th, 2022, 46 days into the new year, only 319 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of nowhere. A total undisclosed location, but it is beautiful in here. Freezing cold. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and NX Networks. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing tonight? Lou Elizondo is back with us. That's right. Lou's going to be with us at the bottom of the hour. Stay right there. Tomorrow night, James Fox. Thursday night is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. I posted some pictures earlier today, and uh, it was pretty incredible. Uh, I shot some video, too, as well. And uh, I did some live streaming because, and I don't normally do this stuff, Stay off of social media, if you know what I mean. But um, this is the deal. This weekend, uh, we had 70, 75-degree weather. You saw the Super Bowl. They were saying it's 85 degrees outside. You know, and, and that's what we, you know, and and uh, I was out all night on the back patio. It was just go- perfect weather, right? And today, so I, I woke up. And I was like, man, it's a little nippy this morning. Not bad. And I was waiting for it to warm up. And uh, that was like at 8 a.m. And and I was like, man, really? Clouds are rolling in. Okay. So from that point on, it it started to get cold. And then um, I'm going to say it was around 11. This is during the day. You, the temperature just dropped. Foomp. It went to freezing cold, and I'm in here in the bunker, and uh, and I hear what sounds like I, I, I'm here like gunshots, right? Okay, and uh, so I get up, I go and open up that it's hailing, hail. <laughs> in my front yard is white not yet <clears throat> i'm getting ahead of my skis i go out to the back and my entire backyard is white and i shot video and i posted pictures and i couldn't believe what i was seeing and the roofs of, of my neighbors it looked like a winter wonderland i was like it was just 75 degrees and uh, and it stayed. It did not go away. It it didn't melt. It stayed. 
Still got it outside, and it's uh, 7 o'clock at night. It was absolutely incredible. To see that kind of weather change that rapid, that fast, um, is shocking. And I felt it, too, just like, whoop. And uh, I had to uh, go out. So I drove, put on a, a Levi's jacket, nothing warm. I, I didn't think I needed it. And I even wore that just because I did. I was just going to wear a T-shirt. I thought, well, okay, feels like it. And in in like ten, I got back. It was like ten minutes, fifteen minutes later. I'm like, it's freezing, like freezing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Then the hail hit. It was it was insane. I'm going to say I I don't know. I could be exaggerating, but it seemed like minutes. Maybe it was an hour. Uh, the temperature dropped, but it was rapid. It was crazy. So anyway, it's still freezing. Trying to trying to stay warm because we got Lou in the house tonight. Excited about this. And uh, we've got lots to cover uh, with Lou tonight. There is a lot going on. And uh, I'll let him share everything with you. And, uh, and I've got some comments about uh, where things are today. In just a few minutes, follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. The Sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. Hello to everybody listening and watching all around the world. What is going on? It's going to be a great show tonight. A great show tomorrow night, too, as well. And uh, there you go. Now, there is um, a lot of crazy breaking news. And and I'm going to get to this, this first study that was just released uh, today. And I, I'm not quite, because also, and I, I, I'm going to comment more about this tomorrow, the NOAA has also released uh, another study, and these things are now conflicting, the, and the, the conflicting is conflicting the conflicting, all right? So here you go. First up, the worst case Climate change scenarios with up to a four degree Celsius or a five degree Celsius warming are no longer possible. This is all according to a new study. Researchers at the University of Colorado at Boulder say that such scenarios are based on outdated data from 15 years ago and are no longer likely to happen. What? The study also found that the goal of the Paris Climate Agreement to limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius is possibly still within reach. Lead author Roger Apalke Jr., professor of environmental studies at Colorado University Boulder, said, and I quote, This is cautiously optimistic good news with respect to where the world is today compared to where we thought we might be. The two degrees Celsius target from Paris remains within reach. Wow. Right? Now, now what, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? 15 years of data is outdated. And uh, then the NOAA came out today <clears throat> and said, I'll talk about this more tomorrow because it's got to be in-depth that we're about to have rising tides and climate warming is is here. It's it's, it's just, I I don't get it. Even the scientists now aren't agreeing with each other on this. All right. Well, Virgin Galactic back in the news. Virgin Galactic is reopening sales of its tickets that give customers a ninety minute joy ride aboard an air launched rocket that brushes the edge of space. The total cost of space flight reservation is $450,000. The initial deposit required to hold a slot on any future space plane journey is $150,000. Virgin Galactic CEO Michael Cole, uh, Cole Lazier said in a statement today, quote, we plan to have our first 1,000 customers on board at the start of commercial service later this year providing an incredibly strong foundation as we begin regular operations and scale our fleet, end quote. Branson tested his own product, if you remember, back in July of 2021, 
And Jeff Bezos Blue Origin is ferrying celebrities to the edge of space. And of course, there is SpaceX. So it appears that space is within reach to more people than ever before. If you can afford it. That's right. Researchers have developed a new artificial intelligence program that can sound flirty by mimicking human-like speech patterns, including subtle emotions and non-speech sounds, such as sighs and laughter and crying and pauses between words. You know, all that sexy stuff. A demo released yesterday shows the AI's potential to create hyper-realistic romantic encounters, end quote. The program has been developed by Sonantic, a London-based tech firm that produces AI voices for Hollywood films and video games, describing the product as the first AI that can flirt, <laughs> end quote. The company noted that humans won't be the only ones teasing and acting coy anymore. And if that isn't the creepiest news of the day, I got nothing. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today. The Simpsons creator, Matt Groening. Today is 67. Jane Seymour. Oh, man. Jane Seymour today is 71. You've got to go back. She's one of the most active uh, people in in Hollywood, film and television. No question about it. Um, But if you go all the way back to the beginning, Head Office. That's that's one of my favorite Jane Seymour movies right there. She's also great in The Kaminsky Method uh, with Michael Douglas. Producer Glenn Johns today is 79. Of course, produced The Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and everybody else in rock and roll. And Ozzy Osbourne guitarist, Jakey Lee, today is 65. Our dead guy's birthday today is Galileo. 1564 to 1642, Galileo was an astronomer, a physicist, and an engineer, and has been called the father of observational astronomy, the father of modern physics, the father of the scientific method, and the father of modern science. In 1633, he was sentenced to formal imprisonment at the pleasure of the Inquisition of Heresy. On the following day, this was commuted to house arrest, under which he remained for the rest of his life. But he also continued to receive visitors at his home all the way until 1642, when after suffering fever and heart palpitations, He died on January 8th, 1642, at the age of 77. On this day in history, OTD, 1903. Toy store owner and inventor Morris Mitchum places two stuffed bears in his shop window, advertising them as teddy bears. On this day in 1903, the teddy bear was born. Fader fact. Okay, now listen to me, everybody. And I know that there's conspiracy theorists out there like me and uh, and others that have alternative thoughts and views on facts and things and, and stuff. And then I give you this fader fact. The term patient zero. Okay, listen to me. The term patient zero. Zero is based on a misunderstanding. That's right. An early HIV patient was named patient O. Not zero. O, as in the letter O. Standing for, quote, patient out of California, end quote. People misinterpreted, and they saw the letter as the number zero. That's it. Nothing more. Now you know. That's a trip, isn't it? Think about it. All right. Tonight, we have very special guest. Lou Elizondo is here. He's back with us. 
so much to discuss, and it was kind of funny. <laughs> it was a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> talking to Lou, and uh, I said, dude, uh, uh, you know, we're just yapping. I'm like, you know what, man? It, it, it's time. It is, isn't it? I said, yeah, man. Got to get you back. You, you think? I said, yeah, I think. And uh, we were deep in conversation about all this stuff. I said, man, let's just... Let's save all this chit chat for the show. And he said, absolutely. Let's do this. And that was then. We had a, a, a little thing called Valentine's Day that got in the way. Tonight is the first night that I could get Lou on the show, and he is here with us. Tomorrow night, James Fox. And Thursday's another fader night with open lines all night long. Now, River Moon Coffee. Fade to black blend. Man, I can't believe it hailed today. It was 75 degrees. I, I put on sunscreen yesterday. I mean, no socks, flip-flops, just just cold drinks on the patio, not a cloud in the sky, sunny. I had no that that I would wake up today <laughs> to a frozen. <clears throat> frozen landscape outside absolutely crazy all right <clears throat> sometimes i got to get these pipes warmed up and i can't do it right now i can't do it because right now i got something to say now i know everybody's here tonight for lou not here for me i get that but let's talk about lou for a second it's funny to me, to think about how far we have come in the last four years. It's really funny. Both as a community and as a world. Especially when it comes to the UFO slash UAP issue. So much drama has passed. So much news, so much stuff. One thing that I had mentioned four years ago had to do with TTSA. And what I had said back then, I said that, that we had to let time pass before we draw any conclusions. You know, it's all about trust, right? And I had said back then quite directly that maybe in four years, there will be no TTSA. I can't predict the future, but maybe TTSA won't even be here. They may just come and go. They may be around. They may change the world forever, and, 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 and they're going to be. But maybe not. And we have to wait, right, that they just may come and go. Like everything else when it comes to UFOs in this community. That we, in this community, we're, we are used to it. And we are. Okay? And, and this community has a way of being very patient. Now, here we are. Four years down the road. And no TTSA. It's done. It's over. It's kaput. So, who would have thought that this would be the case in 2017? Think about that. What side of the fence were you on back then? Where were you in the Twitterverse? Right? Social media, in your thoughts, in what was going on, and what you were reading in the press. Where were you? You know, and were you listening to me? Right? You know, just be a little cautious. Let's not push our chips into the middle of the table just yet. Let's just slow down and wait. But back then in 2017, right, it was all about TTSA, DeLong, breaking down barriers, blowing it all up, selling stock, publishing books, socks, T-shirts, <laughs> Getting it done in all forms of media. TV shows. 
documentaries in the works. And just in the span of a couple of years, it would start to fade away. Today, today, well, it happened so fast. And if you think about it, it happened pretty clean. It just kind of dissolved. Today, TTSA has been all but forgotten. That's right. Just me mentioning it right now probably sounds strange because in that right now, right now, you, no matter who you are and where you were back in 2017, you right now, right now, you're actually thinking to yourself, that's right. I forgot all about TTSA church. You know, you are. Seriously. <laughs> it's a crazy thought, isn't it? And just stay with me. The two serious people that TTSA was built around, T- TTSA could not have happened without. Those two people left and continued to do what they set out to do back then. And that is move this issue forward at all costs. And speaking of, of course, Chris Mellon and Lou Elizondo. Now, I know, I know, and people point it out all the time that I have been critical of them both in the past. And I have, absolutely. And I still am to some degree today. <laughs> I, I let Lou know. He knows in that in that we have to keep our foot on the gas as a community, as a world. Lou's got to keep his foot on the gas. So do we, right? But it's also about trust, and trust only comes with time. And after four years. It's Chris and Lou that continue on and to a large part have really started to earn our community's trust. And that includes me. Now, am I all in? No, I'm getting close. I'm getting close. So tonight Lou is back and I look at it like this. Lou and I, uh, if we go back to uh, the first time that Lou was on the show, and I remember (laughs) Lou's listening right now. I'm sure Jennifer's listening. And uh, and that first phone call, and Lou picked up the phone. He knew it was me. And uh, he picked up the phone, and he's laughing. And I started laughing with him. (laughs) And... uh, and uh, and I remember it was just like, okay, yes, let, let, let's do this. I know that uh, the community is going to freak out. There's people around me that, that, that may do that, and there's people around you, church, that, that might do that. And, and right now they want drama. Uh, let's not give them drama. Let's just have a conversation. And if it's drama that they want, they're not going to get it uh, between the two of us. Uh, let's just talk. You can ask whatever you want. It, it's not that that big of a deal. Um, I'm a I'm a big boy. I can handle myself. But uh, let's just be honest with each other, and we'll build some trust over time. That was the conversation we had, and that thing that Lou and I have together is what's going to happen tonight on the show. All right, all right. So, am I all in? <laughs> Do you remember? Hey, man, uh, this thing, this thing, do we push our chips into the middle of the table? I say not so fast. Let's just chill out because in a couple of years, we'll be able to look back and see where we are. And I said that over and over again, verbatim, word for word. And here we are four years later. And the two men standing, Chris and Lou, that says a lot. Seriously. All right. All right. 
Tonight, Lou Elizondo is here. He's back with us tomorrow night. James Fox, Thursday night is another fader night with open lines all night long. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer and UnX Networks. It's going to be a great show tonight. going to be a great conversation. You can just sit right there and be patient because right after this short break, Lou Elizondo is with us. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day. As an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15 percent off of your order today rivermooncoffee.com this is the only way forward this is fade to black make contact this is jimmy church of fade to black and you can get our podcast for just two dollars per month all you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com hi folks it's trembling times and fear is pushing emotions which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Dot com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Get the tea dot com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's get the tea dot com. Get the tea dot com. The tea that makes you go. The new KUNXDB, the UNX Network, bringing you the best in paranormal programming in premium, high-definition streaming audio and video. Log on to the network at unxnetwork.com and check out the growing lineup of programs, including Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and many more. Sign up for the free UNX newsletter, follow the UNX blog, or pick up the latest edition of the UNX magazine. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So check us out at unxnetwork.com. Tap the show page and the calendar so you never miss your favorite live shows and podcasts. We are your portal for all things paranormal. The X, explaining the unexplained. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network. 
Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthews, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, tonight, Lou Elizondo joins us. We're going to discuss all of the latest updates around his efforts in Washington, D.C. and the UAP issue and so much more. And I would like to also discuss a little bit uh, Chris Mellon's latest article over at The Debrief. We'll see if we can squeeze that in, too, as well. I'm watching Lou now. He's taking notes. That makes me nervous. Lou is the former director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, otherwise known as ATIP, Senior Counterintelligence Officer for the Department of Defense. He operated throughout Afghanistan, the Middle East, and Latin America. He is a trained special agent who has led countless tactical and strategic missions, both during wartime and at times of peace. His academic background includes, I don't buy any of this, though. This is disinfo right here, folks microbiology, <laughs> immunology, parasitology, secret agents and parasites with research experience into tropical diseases. Lou is also an inventor who holds several patents. And he also starred with me in a film called The Observers. And uh, that was a monumental achievement. Maybe tonight we'll discuss that a little bit too as well. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, uh, the one and only, the the U, the UFO UAP rebel, Lou Elizondo. <laughs> Jimmy, thanks much for having me. I'm not uh, sure I deserve all those accolades. You listening to you say them, it actually makes me sound smart. So anybody who knows me knows that's, uh, I'm not I'm not smart. All my all uh, all those brains in the family are on my uh, on my girl's side for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I respect that. I I kind of feel the same way myself. Actually, smoke and mirrors, Lou, smoke and mirrors. So, <laughs> um, uh, I want to start with this, um, and uh, and I'm going to ask you a few direct things, and um, and I apologize a little bit to you in advance, and that we've talked about some of this on the phone. And I just made some mental notes to myself and that I do want to uh, disclose um, uh, to the audience that uh, Lou's uh, and I's private conversation stay private. Um, but I'm going to dip, dip my toe in the water just a little bit here. Um, well, Jimmy, you know, the, the, the rule is that there are no rules. So you can ask me anything you want. Um, I've always made that very clear to, to anybody in your audience uh, who's ever listened to me before. Um, so, so no problem. I got it. And if, if there's something I can't answer, I'll be, I'll be forthcoming and tell you I can't answer and I'll at least give you a reason why I can't answer it. How about that? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so this is one of our phone conversations. Then. <laughs> All right. Is this Lou, do you feel that you have weathered the critical storm? Have you moved past it now? Have you, have you seen the worst of it? Um, no, but that's, that's part of the journey we're on, right? So anytime you stand up for something, there's going to be people out there that you are going to be challenging their preconceived notion or narrative. And when you do that, they have really two options. Either they can listen and, uh, hopefully, uh, agree to disagree or hope even better, you know, they, they, they jump on board, uh, on board the, the, the bandwagon. Or they can continue to resist it. Now, look, my my biggest concern here isn't for those out there that that constantly, you know, throw barbs at me and false accusations and BS like that. Because in reality, those who know me know damn well who I am. Um, my real concern are for those those victims, those people out there who actually believe these folks that are trying to push some sort of false narrative or agenda and don't know any better. You know, that that to me, that that's a crime. That's that's criminal. And when you prey on people like that who just want the answers, and so what you do is you provide these false narratives and basically say, "Listen to me, and only do as I say," and you know these other people are are, are full of, full of nonsense and don't pay attention to them. That's dangerous behavior. That's reckless behavior. That's actually the antithesis of everything that I stood up for when I was in the military, which is 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 individual freedoms and liberties and the ability to think on your own. 
you know, I, I'm just here to provide the truth and information that I was privy to and do it in a legal way and hopefully push the ball forward and we have a conversation. And now here we are four years later and we're having the conversation. Where were these people four years ago? Nowhere. They were selling junk BS tickets to, to some sort of narrative or dropping flares out of a plane or some sort of nonsense like that. Um, you know, and, and now, of course, they're the most vocal. And, you know, my response is, well, you know, you had a chance, you had an opportunity and you blew it. Instead, you decided to sell your snake oil to 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 these these people out there that just want an answer and you preyed upon them. And that's criminal. That's 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 horrible. And so for me, my 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 anger and resentment is directed towards that t- taking advantage of innocent people and and socking them for you know 1700 bucks for some sort of experience um i i i'm appalled by that behavior and more importantly i'm really really concerned for those people that that are in their grips because they're they're not allowed to think they're not allowed to 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 look at an alternative hypothesis and i think that's very dangerous you know there's there are our dictators out there throughout history that that practice that same type of behavior and you know fortunately most people are smart enough the problem is these type of people prey on emotions they they're preying on people's wanting to have an answer and a belief in something much greater than than themselves and and where they are and and i think that's I think that's problematic because at the end of the day, the narrative belongs to everyone. It belongs to you, it belongs to me, it belongs to the audience out there that's listening to this. And none of us should own the narrative. This is something that collectively we should all be talking about around the dinner table and around the water cooler, not getting on social media and 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 making BS accusations about people that are flatly wrong. And then doxing them and trying to get personal information about their families I mean, who does that? I mean, could I do that to them? Sure, absolutely I could. I mean, as a great trained counterintelligence officer, there's a whole lot of dirt I can dig up. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, to those people out there who are listening, you know, don't be surprised when when you find out the other side of the story, that some of these same people that are doing this type of activity are actually criminals, like real bona fide, no kidding, criminals that have been charged with crimes, right? I'm not going to go there now. I don't want to sit here and start throwing barbs. But, you know, do please do your due diligence, you know, when when the, the Internet's full of misinformation. And so it's up to people like you, Jimmy, and others and, and Christina and, and the wonderful people that make UAP, you know, uh, Twitter reality to help people know where to find real information. Right. We have a moral obligation, a responsibility, because this topic has been in the shadows for so long and relegated to tinfoil hats that it is only now being taken seriously. And all these people out there that are throwing barbs had nothing to do with this topic being where it is today. They aren't in any of the meetings that I'm in in Washington, DC. They're not in any of the meetings that I have with, with senior executives. They're not in any of the meetings that I have with, with senior military people. They're not there. And you know why? Because they're full of crap. Right. So they're, they're not helping the conversation. So anyways, I guess my point is, I don't mean to get off on a tangent, forgive me. Um, no, I don't pay attention to, to those to those people. Um, you know, the time time will do a great job itself um, proving what's what's right and what's wrong. And we're seeing it right now. I don't have to lift a finger because, quite frankly, you know, I, I, I'm in these. I just came back from Washington, D.C. with Chris Mellon. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most successful times, the most successful visits we've ever had in Washington. Now, now think about that for a minute. Of all the progress we've made in four years to now having a law on the books, which is historic, that goes into all the things we discussed for the last year and a half, you and I, to include you know medical effects, right, and working with our foreign allies and all these other things that we we you know people hoped and dreamed would one day be addressed. It's now in there. It's law, and and these people that throw barbs um, are rather inconsequential, and I think most people most people are smart enough to see through it. You know, you've got a guy that's got some little silly alien icon on his social media and he's got a few, you know, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand followers. Um, where, where is that person in the deliberations? Nowhere. Where is that person when, when we're in DC, when we're having our meetings on the Hill or, or near the Pentagon? Nowhere. They're not anywhere. They're on their couch. They're in their mother's basement, probably surfing porn. They're not, they're not engaged in this topic. That's for damn sure. So, 
Anyways, there you have it. I'll shut up now. Yeah, how and, do you uh, really feel? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's really children, feel? sure, and, 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 and kids listening to this, so yes, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll bite my tongue. Yes, and uh, uh, when we uh, uh, part of the things that we uh, discussed last week, um, uh, I, I want to say this without ego. Um, you, you know and appreciate who I am and, and what I do. And you also know that if you're going to say something to me, it's got to be at a level to excite me. Uh, that's that. And so when you say to me, okay, church, I hope you're sitting down because this is what I have to say. I, I actually sit down. I physically sit down. And, and you said to me uh, with that warm-up uh, uh, last week or the week before, you said, I just got back from Washington and uh, – the bleep is about to hit the fan. Here we go. And and you pointed out a few things to me. Um, what happened? Uh, what were some of the movements? Uh, take me through that. Uh, what sure. happened last week in Washington with you and Chris? Um, let's let's start there, and then I'm going to ask you next. Uh, who, who did you meet with? So let's start there. Sure. So so let me just say up front that Senator Gillibrand, Senator Rubio, Congressman Burchett. These individuals have done more on this topic and for America in the last year than I think uh, any other lawmaker since Harry Reid. That's saying a lot, okay? Because Harry Reid is, a, is a, was a dear friend and had, was a, was a patriot, did a lot for this country, along with Stevens and Inouye and and, and John Glenn. Um, they are engaged, and their staffs are engaged. What people need to know behind every one of these 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 great lawmakers. There are, are there are staff members that are doing a lot of the, the trench work for them every day, day in, day out. They don't get any accolades at all. And these are the folks that are making the magic happen behind the scenes. And so whenever we mention these folks, we have to, in fairness, such as Gillibrand and Rubio and Burchette, we have to recognize their staff, too, um, because their staff are often overworked, underpaid. It's no, no, no one's fault. It's just the way, you know, the system, you can only pay people so much money to do a job. And, and they're doing uh, an incredible, incredible amount of work on this topic every single day. Two, um, the, the, the intelligence and defense communities are taking this topic very, very seriously. They're committing resources and time and talent and effort. And yes, even the USDI, my, my, my arch nemesis, right, from when I was in, in the government, um, seems to be willing to try to 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 work this topic in an amicable way um you know obviously i was very concerned when when the aim pro well it's pronounced aim but it's actually aoims you know blah blah blah. giq yeah Yeah. what are the wonderful acronyms that we'd love to use at the government um you know i was i was very vocal about my concern i'm like look you're going back into into the into the into the den here the lion's den and putting this this project where it was tried to you know they tried to kill it right when i was in it um but uh, but it appears now that that cooler heads are prevailing, and some of the the more rational elements within that organization are beginning to to realize, hey, you know, we really do need to take this seriously. We do need to work with the DNI. We do need to work with the services and the components and the field activities to to do a good job because the American people expect it, and so does Congress. And by the way, Congress is going to be up their butts every year if they don't. So um, I'm I'm very pleased to see that. And then. Last but not least, you know, people look and they, they always think of Nimitz or the Roosevelt or, you know, maybe the, the USS Kid or some of these, these incidents, you know, a couple of years ago. I'm not sure people appreciate these things are going on every day. Now, think about that, Jimmy. Every day, like last week and the week before, multiple, multiple events. Um, and, and, and they are, you know, other services, not just the Navy that's encountering them. I'm not going to go into detail here. Uh, but but you know pilots are frustrated, and and now this the, the the system is beginning to to slowly start to grind. The cogs and the gears are beginning to to move in the right direction. So so I'm I'm very very pleased. Uh, my very good friend Chris Mellon and, and colleague Chris um, was very helpful. That that I won't say who read it, but that letter that he wrote that was put into to Tim McMillan's debrief was seen at some of the highest levels of our government. And you know, by the way, that was that was a dense read. That was a thick read. That, that was, was a, a dense lot read. Of information. That was a lot of words. That was a lot of words. I, let me stop you there for a second, if I may, Lou. Uh, you just said multiple events. So you know, last week and the week before. Uh, are we talking about you know into into specifics here? We're talking about like tick 
attack type event? Yep. Yep, exactly. And some other type. Yep. Okay. okay. So uh, is it the, t- the Tic Tac is back? I, I can't, you know, I can't elaborate right now. Um, I, 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 I simply have to let the government do its job. Um, but, you know, we've known these things uh, have been, been seen in, in multiple different uh, forms. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, go- I'm going to press you, Lou. You're not going to get off that easy. Um, <laughs> okay. okay, so um, uh, the t- – okay, let's, let's – uh, the U.S. Navy, is, is this uh, been reported by them? I, did, I, can't, I can't go into the sources and methods, unfortunately. Well, um, okay. Uh, uh, hold that will on. probably become present at some point and apparent um, when – you know, this is, this is why this annual co- the report to Congress is so important. And every six months, a report to the committees is so important uh, because that's how that information gets up. And then ultimately, Congress can can decide, you know, to 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 let certain information out. They can request that that unclassified information be provided to the public. Let's not forget part of the requirement Congress has is for an unclassified report to be provided. That is correct. That means you now can read it. That means all your audience can obtain this report and see for themselves. They don't have to rely now on a middle person, a middleman, giving them information. Right, right, right. Um, Now, and you also said multiple branches of the military. That would indicate uh, the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, maybe even the Coast Guard, right? That's other branches of the military. Those Those are other services. You're absolutely right. Really? Okay, so uh, this is this is like a uh, uh, big news, right? That of we're getting something it's, it's outside huge. of the United States Navy. Um, did the did the Air Force finally chime in? We're going to get to the Air Force later on tonight. Did the Air Force uh, chime in with a report? Jimmy, I'm not going to d- discuss specifics on on who reported what and when they did. Um, you know, again, I think that, that I got to let the system work, but but the good news is that it's working. It's actually starting to do what it's supposed to do. Um, I think I think under the careful, watchful eye of Congress, um, you know, the executive branch is finally finally doing what it's supposed to do. I got to tell you, major kudos to to the director of national intelligence, our first female uh, director of national intelligence, Avril Haines. Um, for for stepping up and 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 championing this cause, and also the the current director of NASA, uh, who has who has become very vocal and public about about this topic. Um, this is incredible. We've got we've got people within the services and the agencies, all now having the same conversation about the same thing. Think how wonderful that is, right? On this topic, just four years ago, we went from nothing to see here, folks. There is no UFO program. Now, yeah, it's real. It's there. We got to figure it out, and we got to have our Department of Defense and our intelligence community and our scientific community all working together. Now, um, I have called for somebody to be the UFO UAP czar, somebody to make sure that these different intelligence agencies and the different branches of the military, uh, including OD and I, and over to the Department of Defense. Uh, does cooperate with each other and share information. Are you that UFO UAP czar? Is that what you were doing in Washington? Oh gosh, you know what? Um, it's it. I certainly would not want to speak on behalf of the government on who they decide to pick as to be that interlocutor. Um, you know, I look. Uh, truth be, I uh, you know, a lot of conversations happen in Washington D.C. Um, there's a lot I can do on the outside, um, and there's a lot I can do on the inside. It really depends on what, you know, what, what we're trying to achieve. Um, I tried doing it on the inside and, you know, we, I think we accomplished a lot when I was in ATIP, but some would argue I've probably been able to accomplish a lot more being on the outside. Right. So where am I more? I hate to say the word combat effective, but, you know, I speak in military terms. That's, that's kind of my background. So where, where am I most combat effective? Where where am I most useful for the cause? Right. Um, and and it would have to be probably in the, in the role that I'm in now as somewhat of a facilitator, interlocutor. Um, you know, there, there are things that I can't do and there are things that I can do. Um, as for this czar position, you know, I, I, I 
I think uh, the old cliche may be right, asking you shall receive. I, I think there, I think that moment is coming and I think it's coming, you know, pr pretty soon. I think um, the current construct has a chance to work. Um, there's a lot of other really, really smart people now that are contributing to this and trying to figure out the best way to do it. Yeah, there's still some bureaucratic challenges and some knuckleheads that probably need to retire sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have faith and confidence that those people probably won't be in the loop uh, in, in the final format of what this looks like. Um, you know, Congress and, and the Department of Defense are, are, are pretty smart. And I think they, they can see where those those speed bumps are. So, yeah, there you have it. Okay, I want to go back to, uh, before we hit the break, I want to go back to Gillibrand for a second, and specifically on that amendment. Um, when you read through it, which I have and many others have, um, it's very lengthy, it's very wordy, but it's also very comprehensive. Okay, there's a lot of information there when you read this that that didn't come out of her head. I, I, I just don't think she has that kind of knowledge into the subject with that kind of depth. Did you and Chris assist her with the body text? Look, Senator Gillibrand actually is really, really smart. Absolutely. Um, you Absolutely. know, she's, she's spread really thin like most senators are. They got a lot of issues you got to deal with and got to, you know, try to try to represent their constituents the best that they can and their state interests. Um, you know, she's she's no dummy. You know, if you look where she went to, to law school, um, you know, I, I couldn't have gotten into that school. <laughs> I never would have been accepted. So, you know, she she's definitely very intelligent and her staff is remarkable. Um, and so I don't really want to comment specifics of where they might or might not have got their 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 some of their language. Um, I will say that uh, Chris and I have always offered ourselves up in any way possible to assist anybody, any lawmaker, or senior leader um, in this in this topic. And so, um, you know, I, again, I'm not going to speak for the good senator, but she is she is highly intelligent. And don't be fooled by anybody. Um, you know, she may be new to the topic, but but uh, she's she's a really fast learner. Well. <laughs> So you did assist because, look, you have to go to the source of this information to to make sure that it is presented. When this is legislation like this, it's got to be correct, right? And you've got to make sure, and you are going to reach out to the specialist that that has the information that you need to include into this. And I and others, specifically when we're reading through this, so there, there has to have been assistance, you know, probably coming from Chris and, and Lou on this. And I'm glad that they were there because it is worded correctly and it addresses the issues that we've all been concerned about when it comes to UFOs and UAPs. Jimmy, we've got one shot to do it right and a whole bunch of shots to do it wrong. Right. So, so let's 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 do it correctly. Let's mm -hmm. let's take our time and and let's 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 do it right. And um yeah, that's that's about all I can say about the legislation. You know, Chris is a. If you ever have a chance to talk to Chris one on one, he is probably, and this is a lot that's coming from me. He is probably single handedly one of the smartest individuals I have ever, ever met. Um, it's almost scary. Um, he he thinks in 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 such a way where. You know, uh, he's playing three dimensional chess, and I'm I'm not even playing checkers. I'm playing four square. Right, I mean, right. He's, he connect four. He's 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 brilliant um, strategically. He spent a lot of time in the legislative branch, a lot of time in the executive branch, both at very senior levels. He understands the relationship and how both of those organizations work. Um, he's he's truly one of those rare masters that you get once a century. Uh, one quick question uh, before we head to the break. This popped up in the chat room. Um, and this is a serious question, you know, and this is from the community, Lou. So look at me and focus. Do okay. you prefer? <laughs> you got me worried now, Jimmy. <laughs> do you prefer? Do you, put a seatbelt on? <laughs> do you prefer Home Depot or Lowe's? Well, the fact that I'm, I'm sponsored by neither of them and Home Depot probably is about to erect a statue of me in front of their shop because I've spent so much money at this point and my wife at that location. Um, you know, Home Depot, uh, it's kind of like, you know, the American Express, how you get this like American Express black card if you're like really, really like super elite. Well, Home Depot does the same thing. 
No, I'm kidding. They don't really do that. But if they did, <laughs> I would have one of those. <laughs> a Home Depot um, platinum uh, uh, t- titanium steel card, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. I I, I love Home Depot. Um, I am I'm a, I'm a blue collar guy, as you know. I do. I'm a, I'm a you know auto mechanic and do a lot of carpentry and electrical and plumbing work. Um, not because I want to. It's because I'm too damn cheap. And so I made the mistake a long, long time ago. With my my incredibly lovely wife, uh, when we were first dating, um, she knew I could do all these things. Well, that's a mistake because now, uh, here I am, you know, in my my later part of my uh, my my young life, and I'm stuck doing all the home repairs because it saves a lot of money. Um, and a few years back, you know, my my wife would I think uh, get favors from her friends by loaning me out to do other odd jobs, you know. So once I'm finished with my honey do list, she'd say, "Hey, listen, can you go over to Sally's house and you know maybe fix their fan or fix their electrical work because they're having issues?" Um, so yeah, I, uh, back to to the Home Depot question. Uh, I I know Home Depot very well. In fact, if you want electrical supplies, that's going to be on aisle 19. Yeah, right. you <laughs> plumbing supply, I can tell you yeah. exactly if they have them in stock. Absolutely. No, you know what? Um, uh, I think you volunteer for more than you're leading on. I think you volunteer because um, Lou said to me, we were talking Jeeps one day or on the phone, and this is a, a quote. This is word for word. Church, bring that Jeep up to my house. Let's work on that thing. Let's modify yeah. that thing. That's what you, you volunteered for that. Absolutely, man. All Have right. you seen my girl? I'm a Jeep guy, man. <laughs> I, I love Jeeps. I love trucks and motorcycles. Uh, I'm a gearhead. You know, it's funny because I love working on on cars, and um, and they don't bitch at you. They don't yell. You know, unlike people when you're in the medical field and you're you're trying to fix them up, they're screaming and complaining at you, and you got malpractice. You don't with vehicles. You just put on some loud rock and roll music and, and you know, maybe crack a beer or so, and uh, and and you're good. And usually, hopefully, what you've done, you know, the, the vehicle turns out better than than when you found it. But um, I particularly like the old Jeeps. Uh, those old girls won the wars for us in, in World War II and Korean War. And, um, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of those old girls left. And I just – I love to restore them back to their original glory and and just, you know, bring them back to, to their original – their original luster. Um, they, they did a lot. Of, you know, they won the wars for for our country. No doubt about it. Lives. I love mine. One day, as we head to the break, uh, uh, one day I took a picture of the tire on my Jeep. I took a picture of the tire. Lou asked me to. I sent him the picture. For two days, he texted me on what tires I needed uh, to purchase next. <laughs> Let's take our break. <laughs> Let's take our break right here. We'll get back to UFOs and UAPs right after this break with Lou Elizondo. I am your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse. KUNX DB. BX. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30DAYSFREE. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. (laughs) Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. 
Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first Crystal Skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Katini and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. What the <laughs> Just, you we are also the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Lou Elizondo is with us. This is Fade to Black. Now, I've, I've, I've set the tone for the evening, and uh, I've got to tell you, Lou, we have uh, a million questions that have been emailed to me, posted throughout social media, and I can almost just, you know, just read down the list of questions. But one of the things, and I'm sure that you've caught some of this, uh, you pay attention uh, to social media. Um, one of the things that comes up over and over again is is trust. So I'm going to ask you, a bl- I mean, there are those that, you know, uh, you know, trust Lou, and there's those that say I'm, I'm on the fence, and then the, the other, I don't trust them at all. And so I'm going to ask it in, in this way. Should I, Jimmy Church, trust you? Should I trust a disinformation special agent? Well, first of all, counterintelligence isn't disinformation special agent. That is the work of PSYOPs, psychological operations. So oh, so I, 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 said it, I said it incorrectly, but I think, yeah. I think well, you know. Well, I think people, though, misunderstand my job. When they say oh. Lou was trained, it's counterintelligence special agent, he was trained to deceive. That's not correct. My job was to capture terrorists and spies. That's what my job was. And so 
it, whether you trust me or not, that's up to you. That's a personal decision. I would never tell anybody because this goes right back into the same trap where these other idiots are telling people, oh, only trust me and what I say. Right. Look, you do your own homework. The bottom line is proof is in the pudding. If you don't like what I'm doing, then you don't have to listen to what I have to say. But you can't deny that we have achieved more in four years than than 99% of these other people have in their entire lifetimes. Now, does that mean you should trust me? I don't know. It's up to you. You don't have to try to look. People trust presidents and they distrust presidents. People trust their, their spouses and they distrust their spouses. I mean, this is the real world we live in. You know, I'm not here to win a popularity contest. You know, I, I do these 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 conversations, radio shows and the interviews that I do on, on radio and podcasts I do it for free because I'm trying to to get information. I haven't sold people, a, you know, seventeen hundred dollars to, to some place to come hear me talk. I, I'm not I'm not doing that. You don't see me doing that. My, my information is free. You can choose to listen to it or you can choose to listen to somebody else. I'll never tell you don't listen to somebody else. What it will simply say is anybody else who tells you that their opinion is the only one that counts, you better really pay attention and be careful because that's a warning sign. Whether you should trust me, I have to earn your trust, okay? I don't expect people to blindly trust me. I expect you to look at my track record. I expect you to look at what I've said in the past and have I delivered. It's simple, yes or no. There's no, you don't need to go into all the, well, look, it's simple. Yes or no. Did I deliver on what I said I was going to deliver? And have I said the things that I've said and have they come to fruition? That's it. It's that simple. And at the end of the day, if you still don't want to trust because you don't like my beard, you don't like my goatee, or you don't like whatever hat I'm wearing today because I'm wearing an American flag on it, then don't trust me. You know, I, I, I don't really care. I'm still doing what I'm doing. You're, you're not going to stop me from doing what I'm doing. And if you want to be part of this effort and you want to be part of the conversation, Guys there's and gals, there's enough room on the boat for everybody. Come one, come all. I love you all. Come on board. Even those who disagree, that's okay because alternative analysis is important. What I don't like are fraudsters and hoaxers. Those people are not welcome on the boat. So if those people don't, don't trust me, then God bless them. Good. I don't want them to trust me because those are exactly the kind of people I don't want on board. Let them stay out there in the fringe. Let them continue doing what they're doing because it allows me to continue focusing on the real work that needs to be done, which is real disclosure. Um, you had picked up, um, <clears throat> I remember this uh entire uh situation as it unfolded you picked up some metal samples uh, from benny foggins and, and larry secander um what what happened uh to those to those metal samples are are, are they now classified is is there something else going on Larry and Benny are, are, are great people. I don't know if you ever had a chance to talk with them, uh, but but extremely forthcoming and, and really riveting stories. And they have been very, very generous in their ability to to allow us to look at stuff. I'm not going to get into detail. That's up for them to discuss. Uh, when I left TTSA, the, the CRADA, if you will, mm -hmm. that we had, the CRADA agreement, went with me. I was the signatory on it. Uh, we are still very interested in, in, in materials, all materials, any material that is interesting. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, Benny and Larry deserve to have their day in court on this. They, they have their, they deserve to, to have professionals look at the material with the same level of rigor that we, we apply towards other things. And so that is what we're working very hard on. I, I, I cannot, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to go into a lot of detail. And some of this really is is also their business. So out of due respect for them, I don't want to say too much. Um, what I will say is we are still very interested in it. Okay. Uh, so data, has there been uh, conclusions of the measurement and observation of the material? There has been some preliminary um, analysis. I'm not going to go into detail on that. More analysis needs to be done. We need now uh, the right expertise with the right equipment and talent to, to go into the next level and re really begin to scrutinize this. Um, it's really too early for me to provide any type of, of uh, analytic conclusion. It's, it's just it's it's too premature. Who is responsible for releasing the information of the data, not only back to Benny and Larry, but to the public? Does that come from the Army? Well, look, the material belongs, at least the material you're talking about, belongs to Benny and Larry. Uh, there's other material we have that doesn't, but the material that belongs to Benny and Larry, that's their property. So it's up to them to determine what they want to say publicly about this when the results come out, the final results. That's okay. not up to me. That's their property. Because they were kind enough 
to allow us to look at it. That's their business. Um, I'm not certainly going to speak on behalf of of, of Larry or Benny. Um, you know, I, I frankly wouldn't have even even acknowledged those individuals, but you said their names. Um, but um, you know, these these are good people and deserve to have the answers that 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 they're looking for. And you know, we we want to help them out. Is it leaning towards? Uh, you can nod your head, and if you can't answer, <laughs> is it leaning towards uh, an origin not of this earth? It's too early to tell. So some of the material is interesting. Um, it's interesting enough to to warrant further analysis, and I'll say that. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go any more than that because I'm not a material science expert, right? And I'm, I'm certainly, you know, I'm certainly in a position where where we really, really, I really want to give more time and latitude to have the right studies done. The worst thing you want to do is come with something, come out with something conclusively, but prematurely. Uh, that doesn't do anybody any good. Now you had said to me, uh, this was a couple of months ago and I'm bringing it up now in front By of the way, everybody. For the record, for, for yes. the audience, please clarify. I don't want anybody to think that I provided you those names. No, no, uh, no, no. That's, uh, that's my, that there. Oh yeah. Well, Lou knows nothing about what's inside of my head. <laughs> what's gonna, yeah. what's gonna happen on the show? Okay, so uh, a couple of months ago, you said to me that you had grown a beard and you're getting in shape. You're working on your diet. You've lost weight. I wouldn't recognize you. Well, uh, because you're working on your book. That's what you said to me. Now I'm looking at you now. You haven't lost that weight, but you did grow the beard. Well, actually, I lost thirty pounds. Um, oh, okay. I'm up another five pounds, but that's okay. You know, the camera puts on thirty, <laughs> yeah. so there you go. I don't see it, but how's the book yeah. coming along? What's going on? Um, it's it's coming along quite well. Um, you know, the uh, writing a book um, is is not easy, um, and you got to put a lot of time into it. It's not just putting your thoughts down on paper, right? You have to you have to back things up. And this book, I, I want it to be that people can look at for years and years to come and say, wow, that was that was a, a, a moment in time that changed the conversation. Um, it put out information that was absolutely irrefutable. Um, and there's also a very, very real reason why I'm writing this book. Um, I'm not going to go into it right now. It'll be apparent once it's out. And once it's out, I think people are going to have a whole new appreciation. They're going to say, oh, how clever. That <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm writing the book for a very specific reason. And I think it will be uh, helpful to a lot of people. It will. What I want to do is stop the conversation from going backwards. So if anything, if this book, um, it, Think of a Road, right, creates um, – Create some sort of, of of roadblock that prevents you from sliding backwards, then then that will be that will be an achievement for me. That's what I want to achieve. I don't want the conversation ever trying to be pushed back into the bottle. I want this book to stand on its own and people say, okay, we can never go back to where we were because this this one book. Because of this book, now we know A, B, C, D, E as an absolute fact, and therefore let's continue to have a conversation moving forward. Uh, I, and the book is centered on the UFO, UAP issue. Yes, it is. It, I mean, I could talk about a whole lot of stuff in my life, but you know, um, the book would be a, a hell of a lot longer than, than that. So I don't want to put people to sleep. I want to keep it very focused on the topic. Uh, my time in ATIP and what we found and how we found it and who was with us and 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 whatnot and I think that's important. I think I think the American people deserve to have that information. Do you consider yourself uh, somebody that knows secrets, or do you consider yourself when it comes to the UFO UAP ET issue, or do you consider yourself someone that is trying to get at that information? No, we know secrets. I mean, that's that. I had a I had a, a security clearance. Absolutely, I know secrets. I can't discuss them. But what I can do is provide unclassified information in a way, and by the way, that's never been revealed before, in a way that I don't have to have a classified conversation. Um, those videos were perfect example. You know, ATIP did a lot of classified work. You're just now now seeing some of this information come to fruition. Let me let me share with you a headline just today with your readers that came out. Uh, and, and normally I wouldn't do this, but this is important. L listen to this headline, okay? Life beyond 
NSA warns aliens could contact humans through high frequency signals as experts warn we're not alone in the universe. The National Security Agency has warned that aliens could contact humans through high frequency signals as experts say we're not alone in the universe. A declassified document from the NSA titled Communication with Extraterrestrial Intelligence explains the various methods aliens could use to communicate. Now, this is a headline that came out from the NSA, National Security Agency. It was a classified document, but I am certain because we're now having this conversation publicly, it has been declassified. It is now in the public sphere. Now, now think about that. That's just one example of the NSA. Why would the, if nobody in the government was looking at UFOs, then why would the NSA write a report titled, classified report titled Communication with Extraterrestrial Intelligence? What, what's the date on that? Yeah, what's the date on that report? Oh, uh, my gosh. Well, I'd have to go through this whole thing here. Um, let me take a look here. Do, 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 do. You have to give me a moment. Um, let's see here. 100,000 light years away. Uh, you know, called the... Uh, I will have to find it for you unless okay. you want me to spend the next five minutes coming no, through it. But uh, is this I'm sure a- one of your readers probably or your listeners right now is going to throw it up on the chat group. I, I'm, I'm certain that they are aware of it. Um, but that's a big deal because think about it. What it means is that it's not just DOD or the CIA or the Air Force or the DNI. It is the NSA that is putting out that report that was classified. So my point being, back to the book, you know, a lot of times you can say things and do things. Those videos that were released in 2017, those did, even though they they were unclassified videos and a little bit grainy, they did a lot to spark the conversation. They allowed very sensitive classified information to finally get to where it needs to go to, to the point now where some of that information is being provided to the public. With, uh, uh, to, to that point, if this is, is something recent, you know, uh, within a year or two, uh, that's significant. It may even be more significant if it's an older report, right? If it's 10 years old. And I, I just find that really, really interesting. And also the mention of high frequency. And so would that indicate to you specifically about this NSA report, Lou, that they know something, that they are, they may have received a signal, right? Do you have to uh, read between the lines here? Well, I mean, it's always fun to speculate, right? Right. Um, But at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't really get us any closer to the truth. It's just a hypothesis. Um, Obviously, you don't spend government money, taxpayer money, unless there's a reason. So someone commissioned this report. Someone commissioned this report. A lot of people, someone had to write it. Someone had to analyze it. Someone had to correct it. Someone had to approve it. Someone had to coordinate it. Someone had to distribute it. So it's not just, you know, a one-off someone writing a, a report. I mean, this this is a, a, an officially sanctioned report from none other than the National Security Agency, right? So people who do FISAs and stuff like that, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. So, so um, wasting their time on something frivolous is probably not a wise idea. So, so um you know, you 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 read between the lines. You yeah. Well, I'm doing just that, and I want to go back to uh, this UFO UAP czar, if you will. the The agencies, and this applies to the uh, the Air Force, and we'll deal with that in the next segment. The agencies are used to not cooperating, not communicating, not only to the public or to Capitol Hill, but to anybody and to other agencies. How do we know if they are revealing? Because uh, and, and, and processing these reports through uh, to aim to get to reports that will go to Congress. How do we know what they know? Great question. Great question. Well, well they weren't. And, and it seems now, this is why I said the gears are beginning to turn, uh, it, it, it is apparent to me and a few others that, that it is starting to work, that there is that collaboration and coordination and cooperation amongst agencies. It's still not as good as it should be, but, but it's a hell of a start. It's happening. That conversation is occurring. They're having working groups. They're having weekly meetings, VTCs, uh, video teleconferences, um, and they have uh, reports to Congress. And the committees are are asking the hard questions. They're poking them in the chest and saying, "Hey, we want answers. What are you doing? Come up here and testify." So, so that's that's a big deal. 
it's working. I mean, this is this is a, really if there was anything that that I could ask your audience to do would be just, just you know what, write a quick note to 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 Congress to those folks and just say thanks because it probably mean a lot because they put a lot of 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 equity on the line and, and, and credibility to have this conversation. They're willing to risk everything to have the conversation and force the government to do its job. Um, I, I'll bet you that, that Jill Brand and Rubio and Burchette would love just a simple email just saying, hey, you know what? We really appreciate it. Thank you. Because they're they're doing a great job. Gallego, the same thing. He's doing a fantastic job following this up as well. And there's some other individuals, uh, Warner and, and, and company, Walker, Congressman Walker, uh, from 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 his last tenure, really did a lot to to try to open this conversation up. There's 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 a there's a pretty good comprehensive list of of heroes out there that I bet would love um, just to hear you know a, a simple thanks. Now, how far back uh, does the conversation go when it comes to Rubio and Gillibrand and others in the Senate Intelligence uh, Committee uh, interfacing back to ODNI? and uh, the Department of Defense, and specifically now AIM, how far back did the details go? Are there conversations about Roswell? Are there conversations about things that uh, predated 2004? Well, of course, before 2004. I, I don't want to I don't want to go and, and necessarily say Roswell, because that tends to be a third rail issue, right, for a lot of people. But yeah, we want to know what what does the DOD know? How long have we known about it? And, and what what did we figure out, if anything? And these are the right questions to ask, you know, that I, I tried to make the point last year that, you know, we talk about the tic tac all the time. But in the 50s and 60s, they saw the same thing. They referred to it as a flying white throat lozenge, and in other cases, a flying white butane tank. Yes, that's right. right? Yes, it's, it's the same thing, and and it's just it's just described from the from the current paradigm of you know what, of of of, of marketing and, and and the type of products that we use today, and so we call it a white tic tac versus a you know white butane tank, but. But it's the same object doing the same thing. And we have radar tracks of these things doing 13,000 miles an hour. And we have white witness testimony. We have all the same stuff we have today, just not quite as sophisticated. So, so yeah, Congress wants to know how long have we known about it and why haven't we done anything about it in the past? Well, or have we? Can I ask you, um, what do you know about Roswell? Did you did you do any investigation in, in, in a – in a secure way at the Pentagon, did you look I, into I Roswell? I want to make it very clear. When I was at ATIP, we, of course, were all aware of Roswell. But our focus was on the current issues of what was facing our, our militaries. What was the military eyewitnesses today seeing? What was the, the radar tracks that we were picking up? What was the electro-optical, the gun camera footage suggesting, right? Because Roswell is a very cold case. Not that it's important. I'm sure it's very important. It's a landmark. But but at the end of the day, military leaders aren't don't care about what happened 50, 60, 70 years ago. They have, they care about what happened 90 minutes ago. And do they have to shoot it down or do they have to defend themselves, right? Um, so for that reason, we really, really stuck to current type cases. The Nimitz was probably the most historic that we looked at. Um, there were but, some other but, cases. But let me, let me jump in before we get to the break. Did you learn anything about Roswell? Well, I mean, I'd like to think so. <laughs> you, t you talk to enough people, you, you hear enough things. <laughs> You know, was it indeed a, a, a craft uh, from outside of the solar system? It was not a, a, a weather balloon. It wasn't crash test dummies. There's a lot of dummies. information to suggest that, that obviously this wasn't a weather balloon. And in fact, it may have been multiple incidents, not even one. I, I'm not going to go into any more detail. I, I, I wasn't there. I don't have firsthand knowledge, so I want to be very careful with that. Um, I don't like to speculate, as you know, or offer opinions. Uh, I'd like to stick with the facts and what the data suggests. Um, did the data suggest? <laughs> <laughs> You're good, man. <laughs> yes. Did the data suggest that this was indeed uh, a craft uh, not of this earth? The data suggested that what happened in 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 New Mexico was was something very very extraordinary, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right, all right. I'm I'm, I'm going to push. I'm going to push. Um, uh, one last question uh, before we head to the break. Uh, this comes from again uh, social media. Uh, how many different races of ETs are are visiting Earth? Have you 
been shown a number? I, I'm I'm not even going to go near that. I I, uh, I I I don't know. Um, we've heard a lot of different theories, um, right. you know, and theories are just that, right? Until they become fact. Um, in fact, a lot of these were just hypotheses. I'm not not going to go there. There's information to suggest all sorts of things. Um, we 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 just we don't simply know yet. We don't have enough information or data, and I don't. We, it would, it would, what I don't want to do is mislead anybody. If sure. I, if I offer my opinion and even things that I may have heard, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're correct. So I'm I'm, I'm going to abstain, if you will, from from answering that question well, specifically. It, you know, the community wants to know what you know. You know, and, and, and I respect that a lot. And the other point is. Uh, it's their opportunity. I'm a conduit, right? I, and and can Jimmy? I've just been wondering how many races have been visiting uh, mm. Earth, and and what does Lou know? And and that's where it's at. I have to ask, and I think it's a great question. Yeah, it is. It is a great question. Um, but then again, you know, we we very quickly start running down the rabbit hole of conjecture. And all of a sudden, people start telling you, oh, there's nine races, and this is what they look like, this is what they want, this is what they said. Well, first of all, look, you know, okay, that sounds great, but you don't really know. <laughs> Let's face it, you know, you're hearing this secondhand, thirdhand, fifthhand, a thousandth hand. Uh, you don't really know. And so um, the same goes with me. I don't really know. Um, Does the I, same, I, do you think uh, – okay. Now, do you think that – an agency like the CIA, I doubt that the NSA or the NRO, but would be sitting on this type of information? Here's how someone like the CIA would look at this question. They're not going to say how many races are out there. They're going to say, what are the different type of vehicles we have observed? What is their shape? What is their performance characteristics? What is their utility? And based off that information, are they different occupants, right? And if so, how many? So that's... That's how you approach that question from a from a more practical perspective, from a national security perspective. You don't just come out and say, "Well, how many races are there?" Well, okay, let's let's first you know tackle the problem of 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 you know actual nuts and bolts. What what are we dealing with? You know, are they from different places and different purposes and and, and different performance characteristics? So that's that's how how you have that conversation. It sounds and, like and, you've and, had yeah. this conversation with someone in the CIA. <laughs> I can't go there. <laughs> Let's take our break. Let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Lou Elizondo. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Lou when we come back after this short break. We're just getting warmed up. Stay with me. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Cardonel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. This is Jimmy Church. Jason Martell's book, Knowledge Apocalypse, 10 Year Anniversary Edition, is now available. Most ancient cultures speak of a time when their gods visited them. They never say their gods came from across the ocean or from the mountains. They always came down from the skies. Was ancient man visited by gods or extraterrestrials? We have not been told the full truth about our human past. There was a time when all the ancient cultures lived amongst beings they considered their gods. The search for truth leads us down the path of learning where the ETs might come from and why they are here. To understand some of these advanced topics and learn the truth about human origins, buy the new book from Jason Martell, Knowledge Apocalypse. Now in its 10-year anniversary edition available on Amazon.com by clicking on the banners over on our site or simply visit JasonMartell.com. That's JasonMartell.com. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com.
Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Lou Elizondo is with us. And uh, I'm just going to keep the conversation going in the same direction, except... Got another question from social media. Lou Elizondo, Bigfoot, yes or no? Do you go squatching? Have you been squatching yet? Um, no, there have been times where I've been confused as a squatch. Um, I, you know, if I don't uh, shave and I, I wind up walking on the beach, I guess. But uh, in, in seriousness, no, I, I, I have no idea. Um, you know, cryptozoology is something that's obviously very interesting and fascinating. Uh, but I don't, I don't have the expertise to even begin to to this. I mean, is it possible that that there's a species out there? Sure, we find new species all the time. And, you know, every week new species are being discovered. Um, species that we thought were long gone turn up to be actually thriving and 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 quite alive. Um, is it possible there is some sort of bipedal, you know, large ape type uh, creature out there? Sure, you know, I'll, I will tell you that. Some colleagues of mine during the OSAP program, one of the things they were looking at was was that, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, I, I wasn't really an OSAP guy, so you'd probably have to have that conversation with, with one of those folks. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't had a Bigfoot experience, but the squatching part of it, camping, going out, causing trouble, being a rebel... That, that part of it's pretty fun, and then if something else happens, whatever. Well, I, yeah, I, drink a beer and go out with a with a with a rifle in the middle of the night with some binos and night vision. That's something. Yeah, that's that. what I'm talking about. Well, Let's go. <laughs> I don't know about the rifle part, but uh, uh, Bigfoot would take that and smack you upside the head with it probably pretty quickly. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's swing things over to. Uh, uh, what they know and and why they are uh, dodging and uh, specifically, uh, it seems that uh, the Air Force um, and we've been talking about it as a community has uh, has been a wall. 
Uh, Chris Mellon wrote an excellent article that was on the debrief last week, and uh, or has it been two weeks now? Uh, February 3rd, I think. Yeah, so it's uh, approaching two weeks. Um, and it's an issue that it has been glaringly out front, and and Chris Mellon decided to uh, take it head on and, and discuss this publicly, and this was released while you guys are in Washington dealing with the issue. Um, and, and I thought to myself, and this is the question, um, is it, is it lighting a fire under the air force or is it just going to make the air force angry and cause them to retreat further? Well, I'm I'm certain it's going to cause them to, to be a little angry. Um, but frankly, I don't really give a damn. And neither does Chris, um, they need to do their job. Um, Secretary Kendall came out a couple months ago for the record and said, yeah, we know these things are real, and, and uh, but we don't consider them a priority because uh, we we don't know their origin and we can't confirm if they're a threat. Well, as I've said before, that's like a, a nuclear submarine popping out of the Potomac, but because it doesn't have an American flag or a Russian flag or, or a North Korean flag on it, we're just going to ignore it and say, yeah, we don't care because we have no idea whose it is. Um, that doesn't make sense. Um, you know, air domain awareness is the responsibility of the Air Force. Um, there's a national intelligence manager, the NIM for aviation, that would probably beg to differ um, that, that the Air Force probably should care about this topic because it's in our skies and they're responsible for, for defending our, our controlled U.S. airspace, um, both here and abroad. Uh, look, the Air Force is full of fine people. I've had the opportunity to work with many of them, especially Air Force OSI. Now, of course, when you say, say that, people cringe and say, yeah, Air Force OSI. Look, these are great people. Uh, these are people, they're good investigators, they're shrewd investigators, and I have the utmost respect for them. It, it's not their fault. The fault is coming from much, much higher within Air Force leadership. Now, look, there's really three options on, on, on the Air Force's Air Force's position on this topic. It's either they know, option B is they don't know, or option C is they don't care. But either one of those options is not a very good option to have. And so I, I suspect there's a reason why historically the Air Force has not want to play into this, this topic in this arena. First of all, uh, it would be a gross sign of incompetence if it turns out that uh, all along, the Air Force has, has been tracking these things, but hasn't been telling anybody because it, it doesn't think it's important. Um, another issue is that during Blue Book, you know, they really took a lot of heat and they, they, they were put a lot of pressure to close down Blue Book and say that there's nothing to see here. Now it turns out that there is. You know, how do you back yourself out of that corner after telling Congress and the American people there's nothing to see here officially and you can trust us? And it turns out, well, actually, you know what, there is a lot to see here. Um, that's problematic, um, bureaucratically and also from, from, a, from a military perspective, hierarchical perspective. Um, there are probably some gatekeepers that, it, it, you know, if I, if I knew better, we're probably getting a little bit nervous right now because the conversation's happening and there is an expectation for the Air Force to cooperate. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very loyal to my country. I'm very loyal to my, to my Department of Defense and, and the brave men and women that, that serve this country every day. Um, but the bureaucracy, I'm not. You know, I took took an oath to defend this country from all enemies, foreign and domestic, and, and defend the American people and the Constitution. I did not take that oath to defend a bureaucracy. And in fact, the bureaucracy here winds up being being one of the problems that we're facing. And so Chris wrote that letter in part because of the overwhelming amount of frustration we've been dealing with uh, in trying to deal with the Air Force. Look, you, we know for a matter of fact that the Air Force has had their own incidents. Why isn't that getting reported to Congress? It's not a choice. It doesn't matter what you think, Air Force. What matters is what the people deserve and what the people expect and what Congress expects. After all, the Air Force works for us, not the other way around. And if, if, if someone has forgotten that, then they need to be fired and someone else put in there that, that understands that. And, um, you know, again, it's not it's not my frustration with the Air Force per se, because there's a lot of really good people in the Air Force, very competent. They want to do the right thing. It's it's the bureaucracy. It's the same bureaucracy I faced when I was in the Pentagon during a tip um, where the, the system just didn't want to do anything about it. Um, so. So, yeah, there you have it. The uh, the conversation uh, kind of evolved into when it came to why why the Navy and not the Air Force over the last few years 
one of them, the, I feel that the Air Force got a pass card in that it was discussed that, well, look, the Navy is, is out there in, in the oceans. They cover most of the world. They're going to see more. They're going to have more incidents. And I think that that's a pass card in that the Air Force should have uh, equal to or superior radar systems, both on the ground and on their aircraft. They've got the, they should have some of the best pilots in the world. That's not to say that Top Gun and the Navy doesn't, but it's our frigging Air Force, right? So there's no way that they have inferior pilots that don't know what to look at, right? <laughs> that they have inferior radar systems on their planes and they're not detecting these things. That cannot be the case. And so I think that pass card uh, was issued, was invalid when it was issued. Jimmy, that the it's Air not Force. The case. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I've, I've talked to Air Force pilots themselves, and we know of Air Force officers who tried to report stuff to the task force and were subsequently shut down by the chain of command. Right. You know, and that 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 flies in the face of the spirit of of what Congress is trying to do, right? And and even even the Department of Defense. So, so there's a problem. There's a systemic problem that must be addressed, um, and the bureaucracy must be must come to heel on this. Um, you know, or or there's going to be some 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 additional consequences. I feel uh, regarding this topic, um, the Air Force isn't doing itself any favors by by keeping quiet on this at this point. Um, if they don't want to tell the American people, fine, but you damn well better tell Congress. You know, don't don't hide this from Congress and the Secretary of Defense and the DNI because at that point, we're dealing with a rogue element, and and you don't want to even have that conversation. That's that's a conversation we don't even want to start going down that road. Well, and you're trying to navigate, uh, I would say, the halls of the Pentagon <laughs> with the halls of Congress. You're trying to navigate these halls and these issues. And are you seeing that absence of the Air Force? Are, are, you, know, are you able to make the inroads and the communication with every, everything else out there? But the Air Force, you personally, are you seeing that? Um, too early to tell. Um, I, I'll tell you, if I if I was joking with Chris, if if I was ever in Congress, I would haul their ass up so fast you'd hear a sonic boom. I, I would I would <laughs> I would have them come up there and say, "All right, you need to come correct. Let's let's have a conversation because if not, the next conversation is going to be in front of the American people. So, you know, you can decide have a conversation with me or have it with the American people, but you're going to have a conversation. Well, shouldn't Rubio or somebody? Uh, specifically look at one of the points uh, that Chris made in this article, and I thought it was glaring, which is members of the Air Force were in a secure chat room with the Department of Defense uh, and the other branches of the military, a UAP chat room discussing this, got caught by the Air Force and were told not to go back to stay out of that chat room. Isn't that a question for the Senate Intelligence Committee and AIM and the Department of Defense and ODNI? Why the Air Force, uh, uh, you know, the, the command of the Air Force chased their own personnel out of a secure UAP chat room? Sure, sure. But even more scary is the fact that now some elements in the intelligence community want to shut the chat room down entirely, saying there's not enough money to fund it and they want to shut it down. Um, a chat you know, this room? Is, this How is, much yes, money? Exactly. It right, costs exactly. pennies. It costs yeah, pennies. I, I wish I could show your audience your face when you said that because that was exactly our our reaction. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me a collaborative space that you have said is 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 imperative for our analysts in order to collaborate and get alternative hypothesis? It's it's imperative to the ethos of our very intelligence community. You want to pull the plug because there's not enough money. To, to fund the chat room? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> are we are we to the point now where we're we're that fundamentally broke? I don't think so. Um, how about let's you know buy a few less limousines for the year for some of these senior executives and uh, you know let's 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 keep the chat room open and alive. How about that? The uh, the other part of of this uh, with what is going on. For Chris to uh, deliberately start off his article talking about technology and radar, I think was was the way to go, right? Okay, because there are reasons to start there. It may be too dry and technical for some, 
But there was a method to the madness, the way that Chris laid it out, right? That radar data collected by the Air Force is sitting out there somewhere. And by Chris mentioning it, we don't have inferior radar systems. It's the exact opposite. Where is this radar data? Is there a way to get to it? And do you expect the Air Force to cooperate? Um, I do expect that information at some point to get to where it needs to go. Um, if it's residing in, in legacy systems or whatever it may be, wherever it may be. Um, whether or not the Air Force does it willingly or begrudgingly, I, I don't know. Um, again, I, I, I want to be very careful not to disparage the entire Air Force because it's not the entire Air Force that's that's responsible. It is a it is a, a a small band of bureaucracy in the Air Force that's been staunchly opposed to this topic, and that's really the problem here. Um, it's not because most of the people in the Air Force do want to look at this topic and they do want to have the information reported, and and have this information addressed. Um, so again, just just to be in all fairness, I, I don't want to blame the entire Air Force because there's a really a lot of good people in, in the Air Force that are really doing their best to protect this country every single day all over the world. Now, uh, what is the difference between a Navy pilot and an Air Force pilot in 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 the control of communication? In that it appears Navy pilots don't have an issue with uh, discussing this. We haven't heard from one Air Force pilot. Is that uh, doctrine, is that, is, is that something that is taught in the Air Force from the word go? What goes on in the Air Force stays in the Air Force? Yeah, that's a great question, isn't it? Why, why isn't the Air Force coming out, and why haven't Air Force pilots come out? Look, when the, when the Navy pilots came out, um, you know, kudos to the Navy because the pilots weren't punished. In fact, the Navy facilitated them going up to Congress and, and, and briefing Congress. I would agree. They traveled and TDY. And, I would agree. You know, go ahead. I said I would agree. Yeah, ma major kudos to, to, to the Navy for doing that and being forward-leaning. And I think that's why the Navy right now is enjoying a certain degree of grace because they have been so so forthcoming. Um, the Air Force, you know, should should learn from that. If I was the Air Force right now, I'd probably be having some conversations with the Navy, saying, "Hey, um, you know, why don't you help us back out of this corner? Because we want to, we want to, we want to do what you just did." <laughs> um, well, so. six six months ago, uh, when the Navy did their little release, uh, the Navy, the Air Force did their little release. You know, okay, we've got systems in place now for reporting and uh, and and logistics there for pilots to go ahead and submit, and we will be compiling reports for you. It's all good, and then and then crickets. Yeah, you're right. What what happened? Where are they? You know, I'm I am not aware of any Air Force regulation that's been promulgated to date about this topic. I could be wrong, but I, I, I'm not aware of that. Um, you know, if, if they managed to, to, to pull one, you know, out of, out of a, a certain anatomical place of their body, then great good on them. But I haven't seen, seen that one yet. Um, so I don't know what policy they're discussing. I don't know of any, uh, directives that have been promulgated to, to, to airmen, uh, out in the field, um, or Air Force OSI from an investigative perspective. Um, that doesn't mean that they're not there, but, you know, I usually know those kind of things ahead of time. So I, I didn't, I, I'm not aware of anything. And so I, you're right. Where is the Air Force in all this? Now, uh, uh, specifically on this issue, in the budget, in the Gillibrand uh, co-authored amendment, uh, there were many uh, uh, on both sides of the aisle uh, participants in this amendment in pushing this thing forward. But for the sake of argument, right, let's just say Gillibrand. There was a few points in there that were direct. And one of them was about crash retrievals of UAPs and the technology that would be recovered from said crashed UAP and that this technology will be shared and reported on. Does that indicate to you that somebody knows of crashed retrievals in the past? Why bring this up in such a direct fashion? 
Yeah, I, I'm not at liberty to have that conversation. I, I cannot discuss anything related to to the topic of of CR. And um, why? But 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 my question is, why have that included in the amendment unless they know that it needs to be in the amendment? Yeah, I mean that's a great question for for Senator Gillibrand. Um, you know, I suspect that probably. Uh, they want to get to the bottom of it, and you know, k- kudos for them. T- kudos to them for for trying to trying to get to the bottom of this. Um, but I, I certainly can't speak on behalf of the senator, and and I am absolutely not at uh, liberty to have uh, any type of discussion about that 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 topic at this time. Okay, how many crash retrievals have we had, say, in the last five years? Can't can't have that conversation. I, I am not at liberty to discuss anything at all related to that topic. Okay, but you haven't said none. That's the key thing here. I, again, I, I, Jimmy, I hear you loud and clear, but I, I can't, I can't, I can't go there. The next point in uh, the amendment that I found extremely compelling, Lou, was the concern for the health of anybody that would come in contact with the UAP. Again, indicating that this needs to be in there because there have been situations in the past like crash retrievals. So are you excited about that part of the amendment and that we can focus on anybody that could possibly be injured and, and have health issues because of a UAP contact? It's no secret that we were looking at the biological of potential biological effects uh, UAP might or might not have on, on, on biological specimens. Um, I'm not going to elaborate too much. I think it's a great idea that we look at that. Um, look, we're dealing with something with Havana syndrome right now. We have no idea what's causing it. Our people are getting sick, and it's 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 you know, it's uh, it's a real real thing. Um, we 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 owe it to our 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 citizens to get to the bottom of it, one way or the other. And if there are if there is technology, advanced technology out there that could cause some sort of negative biological consequence or even positive. You know, effect. Uh, we we need to know. Um, it's it's. Look, anytime you you deal with something, I often use the analogy. If I go to an airport and I jump on a seven thirty seven, there's no threat. But if I now jump onto the tarmac and the runway and I get behind that same jet while it's throttling up its engines, and I put my head right behind the engine, chances are there's going to be consequences. I'm going to go deaf. I'm going to get burned. There's going to be all sorts of problems. Um, it's not the intent of the plane. It's just that there's consequences. That that leads into the con- conversation about threat, right? Is this technology a potential threat to us? And there's a difference between the word threat and and the words hostile intent. Okay, um, if I get in my automobile, there's not really a threat. If I jump onto a a, a crowded highway um, with a bicycle, there's a real threat, right? I could get run over and killed. Um, and I, I don't mean to say that in a laughing or joking manner. It's just, I mean, they, everybody would re- recognize, yeah, you're right. That's a dumb thing to do. Right. Um, you can get killed. And the cars don't, there's no hostile intent there, but there is a real threat. So we need to figure out, are there any type of biological that you can measure, quantify and qualify, you know, look at the morphology of something that, that helps us look at, um, uh, the effect on, on a biological system. And can you learn from that, right? Can you can you look at the biological consequence and say, yes, that's that's caused by radiation, or yes, that's caused by high frequency electromagnetic emanations, or that's caused by, you know, look, when the early days when radar was first being invented, we would put the GIs would put their food behind the radar system to warm their food. They didn't have any understanding that microwaves were coming out from the back of that thing, and and you know could have could 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 fry you. Um, they just looked at it as a, as an interesting curiosity. Hey, look, I can put my cup of coffee behind the radar, and you know, <laughs> presto, a minute later, I have hot coffee. Um, yeah, that's doing that for a reason, because the 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 microwaves are are exciting the water molecules. In, in the beverage, in the liquid, and creating friction, internal friction, and heating up the coffee. Well, that does it the same thing to your body. That's why you don't want to put your, your hand or your head or any part of your body inside of a microwave oven when it's on, because bad things will happen. It's not necessarily hostile intent. It's just a potential threat of the technology um, and you being exposed to it. Have you, uh, we've got two minutes before the break, and then we'll carry on. Um, who is piloting these craft or are these craft 
just remotely controlled by an intelligence out there? Or do you think that there is an actual physical little dude in there with a control stick? Well, they are certainly intelligently controlled, that we do know. Um, whether or not they are occupied or unmanned or anything like that, um, there's a lot of conversation going on about that topic. Um, you know, we look at things, we, we're, we're now in a, in a state, technologically speaking, if we don't have to put somebody in harm's way, we don't. And that's why we have certain reconnaissance capabilities that can loiter for a long time. We can put them into danger spots and not have to worry about putting a human being into that situation. But then there's other missions where we absolutely have to have a person go, right? So look at look at going to the moon. Yeah, we can send probes all day long, but at the end of the day, we want to send a human being to the moon, send, send them back to the moon. Um, and so, uh, you know, you're asking me a question that I, I really, I, I can't answer, but allow me to at least, you know, expand upon that question because it's not just a simple, you know, hey, is there an occupant or not? Um, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities there. You know, are these things controlled through some sort of artificial intelligence and, or, or, or hive, you know, capability, if you will, like we have with drones sometimes? Or are these things, um, is there an occupant inside? Um, or is it completely autonomous? I mean, there's, these are all great questions that we're trying to figure out. Let's take our break right here, and uh, when we come back, I'll give you the heads up, Lou. I would like to talk about Avi Loeb and the civilian efforts uh, Great. Uh, trying to get to these answers, and I think uh, that is a, another big piece to this puzzle that is moving things forward into uh, 2022. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I guess tonight, Lou Elizondo. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. Radio.com. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, BX. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts, and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen until it's too late? We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So, log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. 
All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos, uncertainty, and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market? We can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure. United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Lou Elizondo is with us. I just spent a minute over in the chat, Lou. Took me about two seconds to to just, I, <laughs> man. I'm like you, man. I just don't hold back anymore. I'm getting cranky in my old age, man. I just, uh, yeah, I just pop off at the mouth. Oh, Lou's got his hat on backwards. Oh crap! <laughs> oh crap! You're getting serious on me now. No, I'm just uh, decided I'd you know switch it up a bit. You yeah. know, there's there's there are a lot of haters, man. It is. It's kind of sad and a little pathetic sometimes. My wife, my poor wife, has to endure it the most because you know she 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 helps me with my social media. I'm kind of a kind of a I guess an old dog can't teach new tricks kind of guy. Sure. And um, you know it's like it's like whack a mole because you know the moment one pops up and then disappears, another one pops up, and I'm con- pretty convinced that like. 99% of the haters in the universe are really like just three people with a bunch of fake names and fake handles. Yeah, you're all, right about that. You know, just, you, you know what you know what I do? I just post pictures of my tennis shoes. You know, I'll comment on that. Yeah. But anything else yeah. you just just all you're doing is is fanning the flames and um yeah. I'm only concerned. I, well, you can't I, you can't feed seagulls, right? You feed a seagull at the beach, and what happens? More seagulls come, and more seagulls come, and they wind up ruining your picnic. So, you know, it's a shame, but you you can't you just can't feed the seagulls. Well, and, you know, and here's the thing: you and I, uh, I wish the community would learn from you and I in that we don't see everything. The same, you and in fact, sometimes we are on complete opposites, but you know what? Uh, we can have a discussion, we can talk about these things, and we are concerned about the same thing. Our approach may be right. different, but you know what? That's what this community is all about. Yeah, I'm going to give you an example, Lou. When I we all grew up, uh, 4th of July. Fourth of July rolls along. You've got your street and your cul-de-sac, your street, whatever your neighborhood, and you guys all got together and blew blew shit up in front of your house, right? And and you drank beer together, you cooked together, you celebrated together, and that is everybody that was completely different on the street, right? It didn't matter. That's Correct. what makes this country great. 
Now, it's suddenly today to have a different opinion or to approach things differently or whatever, suddenly you can't be trusted. You're one of them. I just don't. Right. Wait, wait a minute here. That's not. That's not what makes this country great. We're great it's, because yeah, it's the, we're different. The antithesis of democracy, isn't it? It's it's you know it's it's uh, it's uh, totalitarianism. You know, you you should only think what I think, and anything that anybody that disagrees with me is is you know a psyop or disinformation or or some you know crap like that. It's it's and it's so disheartening because you know these people, if you were to talk to them on the street. And say, look, have you ever actually had a conversation with me? Answer, no. Well, you know, maybe you should try. I mean, I'm pretty approachable. I mean, I've, I've, a lot of people reach out to me and are surprised when I, you know, when I reach out back to them and say hi. You know, it's uh, I have no problem sharing information. What I do have a problem with is drama and, and artificial drama, and I, I I don't have time or patience for that. Um, it's a distraction to this community. It's what's been holding this community back for so long. It's why I don't participate in it. That's why I'm not a ufologist or into ufology, um, because they eat their own. Um, they they are not interested in the truth. They're only interested in their own narrative. And that's why, and I'll tell you right now, and I'm going to piss a lot of people off. So if you're a hater, then you're you're really going to hate me, um, which which is probably a good thing. Um, I want to dis- I want to obliterate ufology as we know it. <laughs> I want to destroy it. I want to I want to crumple it up and burn it and and rip it into a thousand pieces and put it through the shredder and hopefully what comes out of it is something much more scientifically focused and rational. Uh, this is why we have people like Avi Loeb uh, working so hard and so diligently, because what we need is, is, is the scientific community, the academic community, the technology communities to step up and have the conversation. The Elon Musks of the world, whether you like him or not, people who've revolutionized technology in certain ways and the scientific community like Avi Loeb coming out and and speculating that Umamura might be actually some sort of, of interstellar probe, right? This is a guy who's very, very serious and works at none other than Harvard and comes out with this idea and he don't really, um, you know, try, try to suppress him for it. And, you know, let's not forget Every concept in science that we hold near and dear and true to our heart started off of so, as someone's zany concept at one point, someone's zany idea, and it turned out to be correct. So, you know, let's let's try to to do our best to 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 look at this topic objectively. And uh, yeah, you know, if I could reinvent ufology, I would because I I don't. I don't like where it is. Um, there's a lot of really good people. I have the honor and privilege to work with some really good people, actually, on UFO Twitter, UAP Twitter, uh, who are are very rational minded and, and just want the truth. Uh, but then you've got this other sect of people, this subsect of people, who have this weird pride and ego thing going on, where it's all about them, and they, they think it's 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 it, the conversation should be about them. Right. And what they think. Well, no, it shouldn't. It has nothing to do about you or what you think. It has to do with us, all of us collectively together as, as a society. And and if you are if you are against that, then you know what? Maybe maybe I'm kind of glad you're a hater of mine, because if, if you if you actually liked me, then maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to be said about that and that approach. And I uh, I have always respected uh, one thought. And I and this is how nobody knows the secrets. Nobody knows what is actually going on. That's it. What we need to do is just listen to each other. Right? That's it. Keep your ears open and keep your mouth shut. That's all you gotta do. And that's how you learn. Right? And if you want to just turn around and shut somebody down for whatever like like you or whatever me. Uh, we're not going to move this thing forward. Let's just collectively, let's be the rainbow coalition here, right? And just put everything on the center of the table, which uh, going back to Avi, uh, I wanted to ask you directly, if I may, what is your role um, over at the Galileo Project? Uh, I'm an advisor. I've been asked to be an advisor, and Chris Mellon and I and, and other folks are, are are proud to be part of that effort. Um, absolutely love what Avi is doing. If you ever get a chance to sit into one of his meetings and see what what those folks are putting together, um, it makes sense. Um, you know, they're they're really applying hard science and 
and some of the the, the best technology today to try to solve this problem. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a crawl, walk, run uh, methodology where you know you want proof of concept first and make sure that 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 it works. Uh, before you invest a whole lot of money in technology that doesn't. So they're, they're approaching this the, the, the right way. They have uh, investors and people who are willing to, to put their credibility on the line as well to test the theory. Look, they're not saying that they are or they are not UAPs. They're simply saying if there are, then let's try to collect information on them, right? Uh, that is the scientific way of doing things after all. So, so I applaud what they're doing. Uh, I applaud their efforts. They're trying to dispel some of the the um, stigma and taboo that has been been historically associated with this. Uh, there is now a university in Germany that has uh, decided to actually have a curriculum on UAP. There's a college here in the United States that's starting to have a curriculum on UAP. They're having uh, topics of discussion on UAP at uh, the Defense Intelligence University, um, at National Defense Intelligence, NDU, and, and some other places. So so this is great. This is exactly what what should happen. Uh, we should have the best and brightest having this conversation as well as long as every as well as everybody else. Are you concerned uh, that if Avi makes a discovery, right? Something happens. You know, he detects. They do the uh, uh, the laboratory testing. They look at the measurements. They look at the data, and they come to a conclusion that this is extraterrestrial, whatever this event happens, right, that the government may come in and run interference and, and take this information and it doesn't go public? No, cat's out of the bag. It's it's too late for that. Um, it's, it's To try to put the finger in the dike at this point is fruitless because cause cracks are springing up everywhere. Um, I hate to say the word leaks because, you know, that, that connotates people doing illegal things. But, but... I, you can't you can't stop it. Um, there's there's just too many holes in the dike to plug at this point. So, um, you know, I, again, I think if 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 Avi is successful in in finding, and by the way, he stands a pretty good chance in my opinion. Yep. It, um, you know, you're looking at it, it, it rather than trying to suppress it. Why not offer them the Nobel Peace Prize? You know, for for that um, something that could bring all of humanity together. Is um is is it a situation where uh, you um, you have a physical demeanor, you have a mental demeanor? Um, I'm, I'm going to use the word pit bull. Let's just go pit bull overall. And you're the pit bull UFO guy, right? And is that the way that not only the Senate Intelligence Committee but members of the DoD? Uh, observe you and if you weren't there that maybe they would be a little bit more relaxed on this issue but you're there to make sure right and be that pit bull that this thing continues to move forward you know that's that's interesting you put it that way um you know I, there are people who consider me that that proverbial pit bull ufo guy but i prefer to be known as that pit bull transparency guy um ufos are just one topic um, we, we are facing a national crisis where, where the faith and confidence that, that our people have in its governments and institutions is at all time low. And that's problematic. That, that's a real problem. Uh, and if you don't see it, then, then you, you've been living, living in a closet. Um, there are a lot of things that, that the American people deserve to know and should know. And, and UFOs is just one of those because I was assigned that. But there are other areas as well that deserve equal amount of transparency. And if given the opportunity, you damn well I'm going to make sure that 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 comes to light too. Um, I you know saw a lot of things during my time in the government. A lot of it worked really good. A lot of it was 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 just. There were some things that weren't. And and I think if given the opportunity. You know, of course, you got to pick and choose your battles and you have to prioritize. So right now the topic's UAP. But once I can sit back and there's enough momentum and we reach critical mass and I can divest from this topic, there's a few others I want to engage in, you know, that, that the American people should should be aware of. They deserve to know this is their government and the government works for them, serves them, not the other way around. And I believe in that. You know, I, I went to war for that. This, this is how I, I feel. Um, I'm committed to it. And, you know, I, it's 
you either feel that way or you don't. And for those that don't feel that way, well, I understand and I respect that. But don't stop me from feeling the way I feel and doing what I think I need to do and what's just. And for me, I, you know, I have always for my entire career served the American people. And in a very weird way, I, I'm still serving the American people and their interests. I just am doing it, you know, via this means. Um, but make no mistake, as, as much as I'm a pit bull for the UAP topic, I'm not a UFO guy. I'm, I'm, I'm an ex-government guy that, that wants transparency, that there's a lot of topics that I think Americans would be shocked. You know, give you another example, uh, you know, the area of conspiracy theories with, with JFK. You know, it's, it's been a long time, brother. Why can't we have the conversation? Why are we keeping those documents classified for another 25 years? That's crap. There's no reason other than to cover your ass. And that is something that I don't, I don't accept. I don't, I don't, I don't acknowledge that that you do not keep things classified out of embarrassment or to cover your ass. You do it because you're protecting sources and methods. That's why you do it. And there's a way to to get that information out while still protecting sources and methods. But that's just one example. You know, there, there's a lot of things. Look at the Pentagon Papers were 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 formative in in showing what was really going on at the time, despite what the public statements were by the Pentagon and the press secretaries, which we know a lot about, right, in recent time on this topic. Sure. You know what? Turns out that they weren't being forthcoming. They weren't being truthful. They were lying. And all of a sudden people are like, yeah, oh well. Well, okay, if you want to be a sheeple, then you know, shut up and be a sheeple and do what you're told. I'm not that guy. And don't ask me to be that guy. And that's why I I I, I am the way I am, you know? No, I'm not going to roll over. No, I'm not going to listen to some BS narrative, some guy dropping flares out of a plane and trying to charge money. That's crap. That's criminal. You know, this is this is a serious topic. And I and I and I, I am committed to it, just like I am the, the other topics that someday will hopefully come to light. I, I think the American people need to know. I think they deserve it. And if at the end of the day, the American people have a conversation to say, Lou, this is great, but you know what? We really don't want to know. Fine. You know, I'll pack my crap and go work at Walmart. I don't care. This is a lot less of a headache than what I'm doing now. Believe me, this is invasive to my family and to me and to everything that I'm I'm doing. I, I don't like it. I don't like the public eye. I don't like it at all. If I could just dis- – there's a reason why I live in the middle of nowhere Wyoming. But I'm doing this because I'm committed to the cause. You know, and, and – Again, I don't know how to explain it. Either you either feel this way or you don't. And, no, and you've explained I, it. I, no, you've explained it well. And with those efforts, Lou, it's one thing to talk about Rubio and Gillibrand and the Senate and Capitol Hill and, and and the Pentagon. How much of this conversation is moving over to Pennsylvania Avenue? How much of this conversation continues on in the White House? Well, the White House isn't a, uh, a you know a big monolithic entity that people think it is. You know, you have the National Security Council, you have the White House, you got a bunch of advisors, you got senior cabinet members of the of the of the agencies and the departments. Um, so there's there's actually quite a few people that that need to be brought into the loop. Um, I am certainly not going to speak on behalf of this administration or any administration. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not part of the, their their cabinet and. Uh, until I am, I really am not, I, you know, I, I don't know what they're talking about on the inside. I can tell you what the layers below them are saying. Um, and they're taking this topic very seriously. Um, you know, but I, I can't I can't tell you what, what this administration, I can tell you that uh, folks in very high places were, before they were in, in those positions, like vice president, they held other positions where they were probably privy to this this conversation, you know, Senate Armed Services Committee, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and things like that. But I, I'm not going to speak on their behalf, you know. No, I, t- I, I don't t- have that. A, well, t- uh, 2022 is right in front of us. We're sitting in the middle of February, closing in on March. Uh, we've got uh, two reports that are due, one in June, one in December, that is public. And then we have the classified version um, uh, in the legislation that will be presented classified in December at uh, the close of the fiscal year. How quickly do you see things moving along in 2022? Is there a timeline? Do you see a big event, some type of... uh, uh, information to be revealed mid-year in a month uh, and, and and maybe a second wave. How do you see this playing out with what you know right now? 
Well, you know, I, if anybody's ever heard me talk before, I never like to be specific. I never give specific times because I, I'd rather, you know, under promise and, and over deliver. Um, that's what that I prefer to do. But if you recall from the beginning when I said, you know, when I first came out, I said, you know, I think we're going to have a fundamentally different conversation in a year. That happened. And then last year I said, well, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have a significant conversation, uh, you know, as we move this ball down, down the field a bit. And we are. Um, every day uh, conversations are occurring, actions are happening to, to help improve visibility into this incredible enigma we call UFOs or, or UAP. Um, you know, I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I'd say that, you know, 22 is shaping up to be a, a, a banner year for, for disclosure. Remember, I said from day one, disclosure isn't an event. It's a process. And we're living through that process right now. And as frustrating as it may be for some people, I have to look back and say, what a magnificent time to be alive. This is, this is a, a new paradigm for our species. And we're, we're facing it. And yeah, it's tough. And it, you know, sparks fly and it's a lot of friction. But we're doing it. And, and we've, we've, we've moved, you know, tectonically um, pretty far. In, in just four years, um, I don't think four years ago, if you were to ask somebody, would we be having legislation and law and, and, and directors of CIA and directors of national intelligence and directors of NASA and presidents all coming out saying, yeah, this is real, they would probably try to commit you, uh, you know, to some sort of mental institution. Um, but yet here we are, right? We're having this conversation, you and me and your, your, your wonderful audience, uh, and it's real, it's not wishful thinking and it's not hope. Wouldn't it be great if one day, no, we're here now, right now, you and me and your audience living through history and history hasn't finished, been, hasn't been finished writing itself. So, so what a magnificent time to be alive. What an exciting time to be alive for our species. Yeah, we've got problems. We've got Putin right now at the front door of, of the Ukraine, and we've got China looking into the South China Sea and, and then into Taiwan. And, you know, we still got terrorism and we've got COVID and we've got political issues and infighting and we've got, you know, the economic issues and inflation and now we've got some social unrest. But that's all normal. We do that anyways as a species. That happens all the time. This That's never changed. What has changed is that we're having a conversation about something potentially existential, something bigger than our entire species, bigger than our entire world and our, and our preconceived notions of, of who we are. So so I tend to be a little more optimistic. I think I think there's a lot that we can expect in, in, in this next year for 22. Um, you know, I, I want to manage expectations. I don't want to say, you know, the UFO is going to land on a White House lawn, um, but it doesn't have to. We're, 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 we're having the conversation. We're exactly where we need to be. In fact, we're probably a little ahead of where I, where I thought we would have been. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased. I'm quite, quite content. Um, you, uh, people pay attention to what you say. And this uh, was sent to me earlier today. And, and I found it interesting. It was something that I missed. So I hope that you understand this question. Um, can you please ask Lou to expand upon what he meant by, quote, human kinds, end quote. Do you have yeah. any idea what that what that's about? I do. Yeah, it is very personal for me. Um, you know, we 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 put limitations and barriers on everything. In fact, if you look at a map, I don't know how much time we have, so I'll, I'll try to be brief. Look, we are we are a species that doesn't even realize the way we think. In some cases, has been preordained. Now, I, I don't want to get into the conversation of of, of you know, fate and things like that. But but when you look at a, a city, right, we have these neat little grids, north and south, east and west, because we want to know where we are. We want directions. We want speed limits on the roads, and we want to have rules and regulations and policies. So, so we know where we fit. We know where we are physically and where we know where we are socially. We know where we are economically. And it, it makes it because we as a species would get very uncomfortable if we don't know. The unknown scares the hell out of us, right? Um, when in reality, if you were to take a, a globe 
and realize that there is no up or down on a globe. We're all spinning, hurtling through space around some obscure star and some obscure part of an obscure galaxy we call the Milky Way. Uh, and all of this can come to an abrupt end at any moment. We don't really decide, you know, whether we hit it to a, a particularly dusty part of the cosmos in our galaxy, and all of a sudden now we're bombarded by, by, by life-ending comets and, and, and meteors at any moment. Um, we simply don't know. And we don't like to think about those things. But the universe is huge. The universe is grandiose. And... Um, it, you know, we, we like to look at mankind when we say mankind as having, you know, two arms, two legs, you know, ten fingers and, and whatnot. And that kind of defines who we are as a human being and as, as a species. But but maybe there's a there's a maybe there's a larger family. Maybe there's there's something bigger to it. Maybe maybe we have a lot more in common. In fact, life uh, in the universe has more in common with itself. And a lot of what we do and the way we think, you know, we think in, in binary terms. If you, you ask the average person, how are you feeling today? They say, well, I'm feeling good or I'm feeling bad, you know, and you say, are you hot or you're cold? Oh, I'm hot or I'm cold, you know, is it, do I go right or do I go left? We look at life in extremes in, in, in a binary sense. Do I do this or do I do that? When in reality, Mother Nature doesn't work that way. She works in, in, in wondrous diagonals and fractals and, uh, and, and, you know, going left or right may make sense. If you are coming up to the edge of a cliff, but in reality, life is more like a minefield. And frankly, going left or going right could kill you just the same. Sometimes the right decision is is no decision. Sometimes you want to go up or down or, or backwards, right? Um, and we have to force ourselves, especially with this topic, to start thinking about it that way. Look, let me give you another example. Um, if something were to land on the White House lawn tomorrow, what are the first questions, the first two fundamental questions that are going to be asked by our military leaders? It's really simple. Do I extend a hand for a handshake or do I point an M16 at it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's wrong. That, neither one of those might be right. We're looking at the entire, entire equation incorrectly. We, we don't have enough variables. We don't have enough data to even solve the equation. It's too early to solve that equation. And in fact, either one of those may wind up being bad for us. Um, may not may not be a good 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 solution, and and this is we have to force ourselves to stop thinking in in terms of simple rudimentary humanistic ways that we do it, it because Mother Nature has proven to us over and over again she doesn't work that way. Imagine if you had to go to work and the only thing you could do to get to work was take a series of right or left hand turns and not go straight or not go diagonal. Right, it would take you a hell of a lot to really inefficient way to to drive to work. And yet that's precisely how we think as a human species. We think in these, what we call, some scientists call them cardiosocial um, terms because some scientists have speculated the very first nine months or eight months or seven months, depending who you are, of our existence is spent in our mother's womb. And the only thing we are subject to is the rhythmic heartbeat of our mother's heart. That is that is what we experience. We live it, breathe it, feel it for, for nine months of our existence. And it's just on off on off and some scientists speculate that may actually be the reason why from a sociological perspective we we look at anthropological perspective as well anthropology why we look at life the way we do but that's flawed scientists are not saying that that may not be the right way to look at look at life in the universe and nature we have to be able to expand our understanding and and our reasoning and and the way we process data um, is just as important as uh, confronting uh, life beyond uh, our, our our planet because we have to be ready for that. We have to be prepared to think in, in non-human terms, and that's really hard. That's a hell of a challenge. Are, are, are we prepared? You know, that's the big question. Are we prepared both em emotionally? Uh, you know, you have the whole conscious aspect of this uh, globally, too, as well, what that reaction would be. And there are some that say, you know what, we're pretty acclimated now. We've all seen Independence Day 50 times. It's not like we don't think about are we alone in the universe. But are we really prepared for Avi Loeb's friggin' picture, right, <laughs> where, where that is right there, in Jimmy, you answered us. the question already. Look, look at social media. No, we're not. We're not even prepared to have the conversation yet. We can't even agree to have the conversation. 
Look at look at your right. I don't I don't have your 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 feed on social media, but but I know I've got those usual round of haters coming out there, and all they want to do is stifle the conversation. No, we're not ready. And why look? You, the proof is right there in front of you. Right. They're those people. They're proving that we can't have the conversation. We're not ready as a species because, you know, we we can't even we can't even agree to disagree. We can't even have a civil conversation about this about this topic without getting personal, right? And attacking people. It it's 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 pathetic. It's it. No, we're we're not. You know, half of these people can't even balance their own checkbook. You know, so so no, I don't I don't. I don't think we're ready, but I still think we have to have the conversation. Whether we're ready or not, it's happening, and we need and it's we need to be prepared for it. You know, rarely is mankind ever ready for for a paradigm changing moment, but we adapt because we are a species that adapts very well. And so I think, regardless if we're prepared or not, we need to have the conversation. Now, uh, I, I know that we're out of time, but I'm not out of questions. I, I wanted to just stay with me, Lou. You brought up Bill Nelson of, of NASA a couple of times tonight. And so let's table him over here. And then we have Radcliffe and his, con- and, and his comments from last year. Two different <laughs> diametrically opposed individuals uh, all saying the same thing. And Radcliffe's comments about our satellite system picking up fast walkers and we're tracking this stuff and we're seeing this stuff come into our atmosphere, we're also seeing it leave, was very interesting. And then you have Bill Nelson saying virtually the same thing and and both of them directly uh, going at the ET issue and not beating around the bush. Bill Nelson did not pull any punches. He went straight at it. Um, what do we make of that data collection coming from outer space? Not the Tic Tac, you know, over San Diego. We're talking about tracking with sophisticated systems that are in orbit around Earth, seeing things come in as interstellar objects and heading to Earth. Yeah, I mean, you just said it yourself. I mean, that's very compelling, isn't it? Look, it's it's no no secret that NASA's been looking for microbial life. On, on places like Mars uh, for for a long time and spending a lot of taxpayer money doing it, right? And it's not a surprise that organizations like SETI have been looking for techno signatures in our own Milky Way and spending a lot of money doing that. Um, you know, the only the only thing we're proposing is that maybe it's already here on this planet. You know, you, you may not have to look quite so far. Um, and there seems to be some information that substantiates that, that there's enough information, compelling information that says, hey, look, there's something here. Um, so no, I, I'm, I, I commend Bill Nelson for, for, for championing this cause. I, I think he took a lot of risk doing it and I think history will remember him very kindly. And, uh, uh, one, oh, is, is that Jennifer saying time's up, <laughs> time's up, dinner, dinner's on the table, tell church, uh, to wrap this thing. Um, I love Jennifer. Um, one last, uh, two, I have two quick questions and then, uh, we'll, we'll say good night. Um, you have made some comments, uh, on the show and elsewhere in the past that some of this may be living here on earth, maybe in the oceans that, that this is something that, uh, may be extraterrestrial in the beginning, but now they're just here. Do you feel that the Navy knows some of these locations um, that are out there? Is is the information pointing in that direction? Um, I, I think people are aware in the government that there may be some 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 quote unquote hotspots in right. the vernacular uh, areas that that are, have a, a high degree of frequency of UAP activity. I'm not going to go and expound upon that right now, right? Uh, simply because I want to allow allow you know. The government to do its job, but yeah, that that, that conversation has occurred. And, uh, last question: uh, the rumor about a triangle object uh, leaving the ocean, flying up, uh, has been rumored to circulate uh, amongst the intelligence agencies. It has been observed and talked about, and it is a clear, definitive picture. Mm-hmm of a triangle object coming out of the water. Have you seen this image? Uh, I, I am very much aware of it. Have you seen the image? 
I have seen some very compelling images. I will not say specifically which one uh, or which ones, but I am very well aware of that photograph. Um, and how, very how, well aware. Okay, uh, how clear is the photograph? Is it as clear as has been reported? It, it's, it's, it's about as clear as, as looking at the guitars in the back of your wall right there. No kidding. And uh, when, when, when you see something like this, Okay, we don't have to talk about the specific image, but I am. But if you, <laughs> when you saw this, what went through your mind, us or them? Well, I think I think you know the answer to that already, Jimmy. Well, you know, you know, you know where I live, and I, I see some pretty interesting things out here, and mm -hmm. and obviously we've got stuff in development that is pretty impressive, and would we would call it science fiction, right? Okay, I get that. A flying triangle, an anti-gravity something, uh, could be ours, but it could also not be. And are you suggesting that it didn't feel like our technology when you, when you saw this I, image? I, I can't com comment on, on any type of technology that we may have that's advanced. Um, what I can simply say is that um, there is enough compelling evidence and information to suggest that what we are witnessing is not our technology, nor is it foreign adversarial. That's what I'm talking about. Lou Elizondo, thank you so much. Give my best to Jennifer, will hey, you? Bill. And tell her, tell her thank <laughs> you for <laughs> putting up with me tonight. You're the absolute very best. We will talk tomorrow. Have a great night. Go enjoy you your it. dinner. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Jimmy, and thank you to your, your, your amazing audience. Always wonderful to be here and spend time with you guys. You're the very best, Lou. Thank you so much, man. Continued rolling that rock uphill. You got it. Lou Elizondo. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Thank you, Lou. And uh, and I really mean it. Uh, Jennifer is the best, and uh, she's the shot caller. So thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Lou. I know she's listening right now. Lou, you have a good night, my man. Thank you so you much. Too, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'm going to take a quick break. And you know what? I'm going to open up the phone lines. What did you guys think? And I know that you've got opinions. And we'll do all of that next. Stay with me. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church. Jason Martell's book, Knowledge Apocalypse, 10-year anniversary edition, is now available. Most ancient cultures speak of a time when their gods visited them. They never say their gods came from across the ocean or from the mountains. They always came down from the skies. Was ancient man visited by gods or extraterrestrials? We have not been told the full truth about our human past. There was a time when all the ancient cultures lived amongst beings they considered their gods. The search for truth leads us down the path of learning where the ETs might come from and why they are here. To understand some of these advanced topics and learn the truth about human origins, buy the new book from Jason Martell, Knowledge Apocalypse. Now in its 10-year anniversary edition available on Amazon.com by clicking on the banners over on our site or simply visit JasonMartell.com. That's JasonMartell.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. 
when you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Man, that was a great conversation. That was a great conversation. I was just, uh, I just popped over in uh, uh, the YouTube chat for a second. I've been on Twitter all night. I literally uh, spent 30 seconds in YouTube uh, tonight. Uh, So much to unpack, and that's what I tweeted. So much to unpack. Uh, To go back, I've opened up the phone lines. I might have time for one or two calls uh, so, uh, everybody just stay right there. Um, so much to unpack. Now, uh, a few things stick out, uh, to me. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this first. Okay. The first thing that, I mean, just comes to mind that Lou said early on in this broadcast. And I think that we should all take note that, uh, yes, he just got back from Washington and, uh, Um, Lou, uh, I'll just tell you, he was texting me from the plane and, uh, which was interesting and, uh, and then called me, uh, when he landed and, uh, and we, we talked about a few things and one of those he mentioned tonight and which I found everybody should just take note and not forget what he said. He said, that there were incidents last week and the week before uh, without getting into specifics. And he also said, uh, I'm going to expand on that in just a second, um, that it was other branches of the military uh, that are reporting things. Now, right there, the other branches of the military, which obviously I pointed out to Lou, Uh, You have the Navy, you have the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, and the Coast Guard. Who was doing this reporting? Who saw what? And 
that uh, these incidents are happening all the time now. Now, for him to say, I don't think it was a slip. I, I just think that uh, he's uh, speaking in, in a generality, but that, uh, you know, last week and the week before that this is happening now. This is going on now. And I then asked him if these are we talking about Tic Tacs, right? Is, is, are, are we going right there? And he said yes. So isn't that interesting? Now, are we going to hear more about this? I would like to know. I don't think it'll come from Lou. But I think that somebody out there like John Greenwald needs to write Susan Goff, Gal Goff, and, 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 and ask about recent incident reports and what has been going on. And without revealing uh, security issues, are these now starting to be reported as requested uh, in the legislation that this stuff needs to happen now? Find that very, very interesting. Now, um, I'm not familiar. This is uh, point number two. I'm not familiar with uh, this uh, NSA uh, report that he referenced and and read. Um, that I guess Lou got that today. So, is this a recent report? Now, I want to you know is this from last week? Is it this year? Is it is it older? I think we need to to find that out. I will defer to. Uh, our uh, fade or not audience, uh, what does everybody know about this? And if you have a link to this, um, I will see if I can get a copy of this report uh, myself too as well um, and and glean some information from it. Um, but the headline on the report is high frequencies uh, coming from an alien species uh, directed at contact. So that would we need to really stop and think about what was said there. Um, now, this may be something that everybody else knows about. It's the first time I've heard about it. And Lou indicated that he got this today. So how old is this report? Has it been out there? Um, he said it was a classified report. Is it unclassified now? Is it is it leaked? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. But we need to think about uh, that that section of the interview tonight in that conversation. That was uh, very interesting. Now, um, other points uh, that uh, I think uh, were, were very important. One, uh, that Lou is indicating, and he said, he, you know, he's not a betting man, but that 2022... Uh, could see some serious things surface as we move along. And um, how I read into this is we have to picture for a second what Lou and Chris are doing and going to Washington, D.C. and having conversations with uh, the, the officials in government and the military that they are doing. Certainly something is... Uh, uh, indicating something moving forward very quickly. Now, I don't know if this is like a package, right? Is there images? Is there uh, testimony? Are there eyewitnesses, military or otherwise? Um, is, uh, uh, is it uh, something uh, involving... Uh, a government reveal of of some kind uh and and how this is moving forward but that's that's the vibe that i get here that there is something on the horizon that is about to go i'm excited about that and i think that uh and i again this is just me speaking i i certainly collect a, a lot of information that I think it's going to come in waves this year. I think that there is going to be uh, a few few big moments in history that are going to happen in 2022. I can't uh, uh, I, I'll let it unfold not only publicly but on the show as it happens but I think that's what we are dealing with right now and 
um, I think that with all of the conversations that I've had with Lou uh, on this show uh, over the years, uh, tonight was was very direct. Um, I don't think that Lou was holding back. Um, I asked him directly a couple of questions about that issue. One, is he somebody that is sitting on the knowledge, the secrets, or is he somebody that is forcing that information to come out? You know, what's, what's his job? What, how, who is he? And he said, I'm, I'm sitting on the information. So, so what is it specifically? Yeah. Yeah. I find it uh, very, very, very interesting. I never looked at Lou that way before. And I have said, you know, uh, you know, somebody that knows, you know, the real stuff, because I've said, if you, if you know the name of somebody, right, somebody's out there in the public, uh, a government official, ex-military, whatever, if you know their name, then, then they 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 don't know the real stuff. They wouldn't be out there talking about it. Those that really, you know, that are sitting on this, uh, they're scared to death. And that includes an ex-president. You know, that that is the ultimate secret, right? That's the one thing that that is not going to uh, come out or be shared with somebody that would talk about it. And I've always felt that that is indeed the case, except when it comes to Lou. I think that I never really looked at it at him this way before, but the way that he handled the question tonight was an interesting one because I don't think that he cares about um, uh, uh, not being the person to, to push this forward. And that includes Chris Mellon too. And that's that that really opened up my eyes. We really have to think about how how Lou spoke tonight. That was a, a very that was a very, very good conversation. Um, will it be this year? Oh, as I said that, literally that tweet just popped up. Wow, that's kind of weird. Will this be the year? I've been saying this now for for about a year. That twenty to the too much has been built up. Too many things are now in place. Too many, and we have to look at all of uh, the the lines of information that are in front of us. Look at all of them. Don't just specifically look at uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee. Don't look specifically at the Department of Defense. Don't look specifically at ODNI or Washington D.C. in general. Because we do have Avi Loeb. We do have astronomers out there that are discovering things every single day. We now have the James Webb Telescope out there. Um, we have all of the eyewitnesses um, in the UFO community that are seeing things every day and reporting. Uh, we have all of this. And then the media, which there are great journalists and reporters out there that are pushing this forward and digging into things. Ross Coltart, for example. Uh, is a great example of that. Leslie Kane, Ralph Blumenthal, and others. That uh, and that is another source. And this information is coming at us from all different directions. That is why I think that the the things are in place right now to have real action in 2022. I I really believe that. Are we going to get? Uh, you know, it's the um, it's the ultimate question, and uh, I'm going to grab a phone call. I'm already out of time. I'm at the end of the show. The ultimate question, are we going to have a live press conference from uh, the White House, right? Is that, and, and for most, and I get it, uh, that includes the world, not only the UFO community, but the world, that until that happens, there is a question, Right, that the question will be out there, but until that happens, that would absolutely one hundred percent seal the deal for everybody. Will that happen? Will that moment happen? I remember when Pisaki uh, uh, was feeling the UAP UFO questions uh, from the press corps, 
And and I thought to myself, that's the first time I have ever in my memory that that has happened in the press room at the White House, that this question, uh, at, at the UFO is mentioned, right? And you've got to flip open your three-ring binder and get to the page that you need to address the UFO issue right there and, and hit this head on. And there is prep by the press secretary to answer these questions. That's never happened before, right? So are we at this moment? It feels like we are. Okay, with that, uh, I've had people on hold. Let's just uh, let's just grab one quick phone call and get a comment. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Okay, you got Hey, Mago from Saskatoon. Honk, honk. Okay, turn me down in the background. You've got uh, 30 seconds. What did you think of the show tonight? Do I ever love you? Always. Do I, uh, uh, Elizondo? Remember, we talked about that in the past. We have. You and I discussed that. Okay. Hmm. What do you wonder about that? Well, you I'm a- tell me. Well, I'm asking. I'm asking you. What did you think of the conversation tonight? Did you learn something, Jimmy? Who doesn't learn anything watching Fade to Black? All right. Yeah, tell that's that. uh, that's a, that's an honest uh, that's an a, a, an honest answer, Michael. Well, listen. Enjoy your night, and I'll see you tomorrow night right here. I got to roll credits and get out of here. Thank you for staying you, on uh, hold. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy, y- yes. can you give me a, a honk? Can uh, you give me a uh, honk? What's a honk? It's Canadian, man. Oh, okay. I have it's- no idea. I'm, 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 from, I'm from south of the border. Hey, Mike, enjoy your night, man. Thank you for the phone call. It was a great night tonight on the show for sure. And uh, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow right here. And uh, what a great night tonight. And I'm going to get out of here. I got to roll credits. I got to get out of here. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kobar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Faded Black of the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, James Fox. Right here. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. It's time to fade to black.